is holiday break for the students at GCU, but some sticking around because the Lopes basketball team hardly on a break. As they look to pounce on the Panthers of Northern Iowa tonight, who are coming in hot with a 9-1 record. We know the Havocs bring the school spirit, but tonight a lot of holiday spirit in the house as well. That was the Lopes props. Shout out to them and a shout out to all of you as we come at you live here on Fox 10 Extra. Kate Longworth bringing you the Lopes pregame show. Well, GCU back home here at GCU Arena after a quick road trip over the weekend. On Sunday, they participated in the Colangelo Classic just down the road at Talking Stick Arena. And they held their own against undefeated Liberty. They even had a brief lead in the middle of the second half, but then they ran up against a scoring drought going almost six minutes without a bucket. And so in the end, they do fall to Liberty 70-61. But as I mentioned, they are now back home trying to get in the win column. And for us tonight, well, Christmas comes early. Why? Because if we're home, we've got our home broadcasting crew. Perfect timing now to bring in Barry Boutel and Scott Williams. They'll have the call tonight. And uh, guys, I know you've been prepping for this game against Northern Iowa, but also we had our eye on that game against Liberty and what played out in your eyes. Yeah, it was tough. They've uh, faced a couple of undefeated teams in San Diego State, and then Liberty came in, but and Liberty's, you know, they played very well. The Lopes played tight. They needed Wagner on the floor. They needed Carlos Johnson on the floor, and when they weren't on the floor, well, it, it, didn't, it didn't go well for the Lopes. Yeah, they were right there. 49-48 midway through the second half, uh, and then just went cold for about six minutes, and Unfortunately, Liberty was able to go on a 15-0 run, but you can see that it's the, really the inability to get to the free throw line. Liberty, 28 free throws to Lopes was 14. They got more points in the paint. You know, they did a decent job shooting from the field uh, and holding Liberty to uh, just 46% shooting, but just those cold stretch in the second half when they went on a, they got four consecutive stops, but they just could not score. Yep, and then following out was Alessandro Lavery had to go back on the floor after that long run in the second half. And it's sure enough, that first possession, he picked up that fifth personal foul. And everything seems to run through Alessandro Labor for now until perhaps some reinforcements return in the likes of Mikey Dixon and Oscar Freyer. But Isaiah Brown's one guy that we've talked about quite frequently. And he, again, he had a double digit night and he led the team in scoring. Yeah, Isaiah is just solid. I mean, every night he finds a way to contribute. I mean. With his dishing the basketball, driving it to the hole, knocking down outside shots, playing solid defense, not afraid to put his chest in front of someone driving to the hole and taking one for the team. I just like his senior leadership out there on the floor. 1,000 career points for Alessandro Labor. He picked it up against Liberty, joining the likes of Josh Braun and Dwayne Russell. And you see him maturing now. You see him getting a little bit better, albeit he did fall out, but you see the progression. Yeah, he really has. He's lost some weight. It's made him really good around the basket, much quicker to the ball, got good footwork and patience, able to throw the hook over both right and left shoulders. Obviously, we know he's been able to stroke it from outside since his freshman year, but it's nice that he's been able to add a nice punch scoring inside to mix up the outside game. When he was on the floor, they outscored Liberty 40 to 33, but when he was off the floor, Liberty outscored the Lopes 37 to 21. That was a big, big story. Another guy that's been stepping up on occasion, Lorenzo Jenkins. Yeah, do we? Uh, he just gotta like this guy. When he comes to play, yeah. he's very, uh, very effective. I, I like him down around the basket. He can't shoot the outside shot. He knocked down a three when one for four from behind the arc. But he's four of eight from the field because when he gets real aggressive, very tough to stop. Lefty players confuse a lot of lung players, and he uses that to his advantage. 13 points in 27 minutes for Lorenzo Jenkins in the loss to Liberty. Now, the 9-1 Panthers from the University of Northern Iowa come. They're coming in their only loss of the season, five points to West Virginia and Bob Huggins. This team is on fire. They just knocked off 24th-ranked Colorado in Boulder. Yeah, they, they play a good basketball. They can run up and down the floor. They love to shoot the long ball. They're averaging 76 points a game. I asked Coach Chu, are you going to try to run with these guys? They were like, hey, we're going to be opportunistic when we have an opportunity to run. When we know that we stand, we're going to have to be able to patient with our offense. If they can get good, solid stops, maybe get some turnovers or get out in transition. But look for the Lopes to go into a 1-1-3 one, one, or a 2-3 zone, really extend that all the way out to the three-point 
uh, line to be on because this kid right here, AJ Green, a 6'4", 175 pounder, on the uh, Lou Henson watch list, he can flat out get it done. 27 points a season ago in an 11 point Lopes victory. It's a different Panthers team that comes in as uh, AJ Green will look, will look for him, the, uh, the guard, as he piles up the points. They love it from the arc. He had 20 points in their victory at Colorado. That sets things up a bit. Down here, courtside, we'll send it back up into 110 and to UK. Well, guys, I can tell it's already getting loud down there on uh, the court, which reminds me of the Colangelo Classic and just all the love that the Lopes fan section was getting in that game. That game, of course, aired on ESPN and throughout the broadcast. You heard the commentators talking about the outstanding student section and how they were so strong and traveling. They're on holiday break now, but still coming out. And from your perspective, I mean, Scott, I think you can touch on what it does for a player. Barry, you've seen the progression of the student section. But how are the Lopes and the Havocs making a name for themselves when it comes to the college landscape and basketball? Well, they're so loud. It's the best student section in all of college basketball, if you ask me. Kansas, Kentucky, Duke, North Carolina, UCLA. Nobody gets as loud as these Havocs. They do a wonderful job providing a home court advantage for these Lopes and a feed off when they cause turnovers, miscommunications on defense. It really is a big bonus for the Lopes. Yeah, they can definitely be disruptive with the uh, noise here. You see the reaction of opposing teams coming into this building. You see the looks on their faces, some of them smiling because they're enjoying the atmosphere too, but it can cause lots of problems. Now, we need to counter the enthusiasm of the crowds here at GCU Arena, and we need to raise the level of play on the court to match the level that is in the stands, Kate. Yes, more uh, mouth to the players' uh, actions on the court. We'll see how this all plays out. Thank you so much. Barry and Scott, they'll of course have all the ball for you after tip-off. But meanwhile, the Lopes pregame show continues here on Fox 10 Extra. When we come back, we sit down with the Lopes insider, Paul Coro. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back to talk more Lopes hoops right after this. Zender is known for Thanksgiving and Black Friday sales. Sanders and Ford is changing Black Friday to Blue Friday to show our support for law enforcement. Purchase a new expedition with 0% financing for 72 months, plus $7,000 cash back. Save 20% off on EcoSport, Escape, Edge, Fusion, and Fiesta. Similar savings on over 500 trucks in stock. Plus, get a ring doorbell to help protect your family and our community. Don't miss the Blue Friday sales event on now at Sanders and Ford. When my hot water heater failed, she was pregnant, in-laws were coming, a little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers, and we're USAA members for life. USAA. Get your insurance quote today. Welcome back to the Lopes pregame show coming at you live here on Fox 10 Extra as Grand Canyon returns to GCU Arena to go up against Northern Iowa. The Panthers right now red hot, or should I say purple hot, with a 9-1 and one record. And I am joined now by the Lopes insider Paul Coro in Coro's Corner. We're going to get to the bottom of some things going on with the Lopes. And first, I mean, I know you had to make that long trek with that last road trip all the way over to Talking Stick <laughs> Arena. But you were, of course, uh, sidelines with the team, or courtside rather, when the team went up against Liberty. Uh, what do you uh, take away from that game? Once again, the, the Lopes show they can step up and play high caliber teams, an undefeated Liberty team. They were leading by 10 in the middle of the second half and uh, went into that scoring drought that pretty much decided to fade. And I think more than anything, you know that Alessandro Labor's time on the floor is the most important thing. He was only able to play 22 minutes. And that, from that point, you know, Carlos Johnson has a big scoring uh, burden to bear when Labor isn't out there. But the, how about that turnout by the Havocs? They just take oh, over that corner of the arena every time. And uh, it was a great event. Three 
really good mid-major uh, games for the Clangelo Classic down there, but everybody yeah. always is blown away by the Havocs, including the national ESPN audience that talked about them. Yeah, that was really fun to hear like, everything that they had to say about it and how the Havocs did it show up. And then looking at the play, you talked about Labor. He obviously um, went out there, makes an impact. He got his 1,000th career point in the GCU uniform and joining the likes of uh, Josh Braun, Dwayne Russell. But that foul trouble, how does he need to walk the balance? We're almost a whack play, so they need him on the court. What does he need to do over the next uh, couple weeks to make sure he can, he can lead this team but also not lead the belly? Yeah, we know with the short rotation, that's important. And also the size of the team, his 6'10 size is super important. He had had foul trouble in early game, second and third game of the season he fouled off, but he had done a better job. This one was kind of a mix of things. He, he had a, a bad call. He had a, a foul that was really the fault of a teammate. But some were on him, too, and some of them just some basic things about not bringing his arms down, playing straight up. Uh, but there's no doubt about the value of C. He's fouled out 11 times in his career, and they haven't won one of those games without him. So that pretty much says it. Right, and I want to get to what's in store for the team in the next couple weeks when WAC play opens. But first, when we just kind of rewind and look at the games the Lopes have had so far, the record doesn't reflect maybe exactly their play out there because they've gone up against some strong opponents. Just your overall thoughts. I think there's some games where the Lopes should have got the win, could have got the win, bad luck, great opponent. What have been your thoughts generally when you look at these last uh, couple months of play? Yeah, there's always those what it could have should have with losses. Right. But I think also, you know, this schedule was built for a team that they thought they'd have. And some of that uh, hasn't been out there yet, uh, soon to come. But uh, playing San Diego State, that's an undefeated team. Liberty, right. that's an undefeated team. Illinois who they challenged here to the end, just beat number five Michigan this weekend. You know, they'll go to next week to New Mexico. That team only has two losses. This Northern Iowa team has one loss. So right. it's not a soft schedule. It's not just full of pad, padded wins. So they're being challenged at a different level. And if you look around the WAC, nobody's really playing uh, great right now. You know, there's teams playing well, but nobody's really you know, stormed off in non-conference. It's going to be interesting when January comes around and we see that whack play, and it's also going to be exciting for Lopes fans because they're going to get their first look at Mikey Dixon in the GCU uniform. What can we expect from the St. John's Junior transfer? He's a shooter, and that's got to be sweet words for Lopes fans to hear. Somebody who can really sling it. He's got he can shoot it at all levels. A, a three-point shooter. He's got the mid-range shot. He can get to the rim. Uh, you know, if things transfer from the practice facility to the arena, we got a lot of good stuff coming. He's a he's played at a high level, transferring from St. John's. So the only reason he hasn't been playing for the past year was because of NCAA rules after a transfer. And now that this semester is ending, he'll be eligible. But he not only adds the scoring, but he just gives makes the rotation a little deeper, and that gives Dan Marley more options and, and combinations. And that's not really been something he's been unable to do. And you have your pulse, obviously, on the men's basketball team, but you really cover it all when it comes to GCU athletics. So just uh, what's going on on the women's side of things? How, how's Nicole's pals team shaping up, getting ready for WAC play? Well, they had that outstanding start where they, yeah. you know, young team was leading the nation in three-point shooting at one point. They cooled off, had a road uh, trip with a couple losses, but now they'll have a home stand, and it's a, a really a point where they can get right because they can focus on basketball. Classes into today. <laughs> So they've got home games, no road trips. So they'll start with a home game Monday. And, and uh, this young team is really coming together a lot more quickly than they expected. But there's going to be bumps like the weekend. And you mentioned classes out. So student section, they're so strong out here, but maybe not the usual havocs we see. But you kind of referenced um, earlier when you talked about that Liberty game. What has this student fan base, gar like what type of attention have they garnered nationally when they go out there? They take their show on the road. Yeah, it's constant. It's all the time. Anytime a visitor comes here, you see them talking about they've never seen anything like it. The, the ESPN uh, commentators the other day, Corey Williams, said it was the best student crowd he'd ever seen. They and he put said up it a, multiple times. Yeah, and they put up a graphic comparing it to the fog at KU and the Cameron Crazies at Duke and said, you know what, this is better. And we can't argue. We see it all the time, and we know the effort that the Havocs put in. It's not just showing up and being loud. They really put a lot of thought into what they do. They're creative. You should see the scouting reports they put together on opponents. I know. It's very it's, impressive. It's like as intricate as like what a coach would put together. It is great stuff. And I think when you compare the Lopes to the likes of a KU and a Duke, 
Dan Marley's just saying, yeah, I believe you. That's right. That's how our fan section is. However, he wants his team on the court to be compared to the likes of that. So we'll see how this team continues to build with their play on the court. And speaking of Dan Marley, when we come back here on the Lopes pregame show, Barry will go one-on-one -on -one with Coach to get his thoughts on that Liberty matchup and what's in store tonight with the Panthers in town. We'll be right back. As a teacher, your calling was always to make a difference and positively impact the future. You live with a deep sense of purpose and strive to inspire generations of change. GCU's online Master's of Education degree program gives you the skills you need to grow and develop your career, while also making sure you have time for yourself and your family. Today, you can learn anywhere at any time, giving kids a look into the technological advances that pushed you forward. Being strong and compassionate makes you a role model through this formative period in their lives. You're not just inspiring future generations of leaders and innovators to reach for their dreams. You're giving them the tools they need to achieve them. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Welcome back to the Lopes pregame show. We're coming at you live from GCU Arena on Fox 10 Extra. And whenever the team is home, you can find us right here, just like we'll be next Saturday when the Lopes go up against Eastern Illinois. But before that, a quick road trip to New Mexico for a Tuesday tilt against New Mexico. And then on Saturday, January 4th, WAC play tips off at Cal State University Bakersfield, followed by a matchup with Cal Baptist on Saturday, January 11th. And then Thursday, January 16th, the team at Chicago State before we'll see them back home here uh, against Cal Baptist and then also at the end of the month as they continue that black play. Well, for now, we're going to send it down to Barry, who is with Dan Marley. The team was at shoot around, and Dan Marley gave us some insight on what we can expect from tonight's action. Thanks, Kate. I'm alongside the head coach of the GCU Lopes, Dan Marley, as you uh, take on Northern Iowa University. But before that, you were at the Colangelo Classic. Always nice, I'm sure, to go down to Talking Stick Resort Arena. You held pretty tight against a 10-0 Liberty team before they went on a pretty big run there in the second half. Yeah, it's a great event. Uh, anything to honor uh, Mr. Colangelo and for us to be able to play in that event with uh, with uh, three other games was a, was a lot of fun for us. So, uh, yeah, it was disappointing. I thought we played well in spurts against Liberty, a team that's really good defensively, um, very good offensively. We were up 49-48 to 48 at the 10-minute mark and then uh, just couldn't score for about six minutes and 15 seconds. Missed some uh, wide open threes, missed a few layups, had some turnovers, and that's pretty much all she wrote. I thought we battled to the end, uh, but Liberty's a good team. That's a game that we thought, again, that uh, we could have won, but uh, we just had too many droughts offensively. Foul trouble again, Alessandro Labor when he's on the court. You guys had a bit of a lead, but when he's uh, on the bench, uh, it's tough. Yeah, plus minus. I think he was the only guy on our team that was in the plus, and, uh, you know, he got got it rolling there in the second half, made some shots, uh, some post up, some uh, some outside Brown, jump shots, so a lot of things we do, we go through Alessandro. So he picked up a, a couple quick fouls there in the second half and ended up fouling out and had a hard time scoring. You know, Ali's a really good player that can stretch the floor and, and demands a lot of double teams. So we got to find a way to keep him on the floor. And he's working on the fact that, you know, he talked to, I know and mentioned it to Paul Coro after the game about, you know, how he tries to limit the amount of fouls that he gets. Yeah, you know, he's going to pick up a few cheap ones, uh, sometimes on a moving screen mm -hmm. or or uh, trying to get a rebound, and it's the ones that he picks up uh, defensively in the post that really hurts him when he reaches or he uses his hands instead of moving his body, um, misses a shot, reaches over a guy's back in frustration. Uh, those are the type of fouls that we have to uh, eliminate with him because he's going to, as a, as a center down there, he's going to pick up one or two just throughout the uh, physicality of the game, but he's just got to do a better job of, of not making the ones that, uh, that he can avoid. A couple of other guys chipped in. Isaiah Brown had 16, 13 from Lorenzo Jenkins. You, you would no doubt expect to, to see double-digit scoring, especially from Isaiah. Well, we have to have somebody else step up, and uh, whether that's Carlos or Isaiah or, or Javon or Doobie coming off the bench, that, that'll be great. But, uh, 
Yeah, all, all those guys uh, have to play well. Isaiah's shooting a really good percentage, shoots the ball well. Uh, he's just got to pick and choose when he's going to take his spots. Uh, like I said, he's not a really ISO guy where he scores one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. It's when we move the basketball, he gets it on the weak side where he can pull up and shoot that jump shot or attack a closeout where he's better. Uh, and then Carlos, the same thing. I, I talked to Carlos. Carlos is on track to shoot 183s this year. He shot 98. Uh, he's shooting 28% uh, from the three. So I told Carlos that he's too good of a player uh, to be settling for threes. There's games where he can shoot five or six threes when he's got it rolling. Uh, those nights when he doesn't feel it from the three, he's got to maybe limit it to two or three and continue to go downhill and get to the basket. I did see that average is what 5.5 per game, and last year was 2.9 from the arc. So yeah, it's too much. And like I said, Carlos is a guy who can get hot, so you don't want to limit a guy like that of, of not shooting threes. But uh, he's got to do that when he's starting to feel it a little bit and the ball's going in, and he'll have nights like that. And when he doesn't have night like nights like that, he's got to concentrate on going downhill. Uh, getting guys open, getting to the free throw line. What is it? You've taken on San Diego State. You've taken on Liberty, two teams that remain, uh, I think, two of the five that are still unbeaten in NCAA basketball. And then you have a Northern Iowa Panther team coming in here that's 9-1. and one. Their one loss to uh, was five points. West Virginia. West Virginia and Bob yeah, Huggins. And played them really well. And then yeah. they just went into Colorado. Colorado is 24th in the nation and beat them there. So uh, they're playing extremely well. It's the team we beat last year mm -hmm. at, at yeah, Northern Iowa. And, uh, you know, Coach Jacobson, who's a good friend of mine, does a great job. Um, we scheduled hard this year, so we're not going to have any, uh, any easy teams. Uh, uh, so we just got to keep battling and trying to get better. And as I say, just uh, continue to, uh, to try to play our best. And then by the time uh, uh, the WAC season comes around, hopefully we'll have some guys back and we'll be playing better. But this is going to be a, a great test. Our guys are excited. This is a really, really good Northern Iowa team, obviously, and it's going to be a, a fun game for our guys. I know you mentioned uh, your report with Coach Jacobson from uh, some of the Nike uh, clinics that you guys have attended, but you have a, seem to have a really good rapport. We do. He's uh, got to know him at the Nike trips where we go on. Uh, all the head coaches from Nike go and, and spend about, a, a, you know, four play or five days, play a little golf and, and just get to know each other. And he's just a terrific guy. Uh, I've gotten to know him really well. He's a fantastic coach and done a really good job for him. A.J. Green is a guy that you you got to keep your eye on among a few other players, but uh, definitely lethal from the arc. Uh, all their team is. A.J. Green is a sophomore, had a great freshman year. Coach's son it was a top uh, 50 kid out coming out of high school, can really score at six foot four. Doesn't shoot a great percentage right now, but one of those guys can get hot. Uh, last year, we had to double team him a lot down the stretch because he's one of those guys that can get it going. But they got a number of guys that can really shoot it from the three. They got some really good post up players and some big guys. Uh, so we're going to have to do a good job of stopping penetration and then finding them in their airspace. Finally, you're expecting the return of Mikey Dixon here. Uh, talk about three point shooting, a, a guy that is a scorer. Yeah, hopefully for New Mexico, Mikey will be back. Uh, he's been practicing great. Uh, he's been wanting to play for a long time. This is a kid that can really score the basketball. Fantastic shooter. He's just got a knack for uh, to be able to get to the rim. He's got a high IQ, can really pass the ball. So he'll give us a lot of, uh, uh, of extra punch coming off the bench initially, and we'll see how that goes. But also it'll give guys like Javon and Isaiah and Carlos, uh, they won't have to play as many minutes. So we're excited to get Mikey back. Well, they'll be excited tonight against the, the Panthers. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. All right, head coach Dan Marley, our guest. Kate, we'll send it back upstairs to you. All right, a lot of anticipation for what's ahead for this Lopes team. But on a night where GCU celebrates first responder night, we check in with one of the top first responders in the area to get his take on GCU and the community surrounding. We'll be right back. No calories, no sweeteners, all smiles. Bubbly, sparkling water. Crack a smile. Canyon State Credit Union, a local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years, can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act. MLS number 410376. We're moments.
moments away from tip-off between Northern Iowa and Grand Canyon here at GCU Arena. Kate Longworth coming at you on First Responders Night, and I'm joined now by Joe Yonner, GCU Public Safety Director. Thank you so much for being here, and first of all, thank you for all that you do. I know that I'm always amazed every time I step on campus, the growth here, the harmonious student body, and just the safety factor. You feel safe when you're on campus. So I turn it over to you. Tell me about your department, how many men and women are serving, and where they're all about here. Okay, well, first of all, the leadership here at GCU is great. Um, safety of our students, faculty, and staff is a huge priority. So I have about 200 people, and one thing that GCU did that is unique uh, statewide is they're the first private police department. We have a full-blown police department that was created in August of 16. So we have all the enforcement powers and are certified by the state. It helps us police our campus and keep it extremely safe. It's absolutely incredible because you do feel that safety here, but it doesn't just stop here on campus. It extends to the surrounding community. What type of partnership has GCU established with that community? We have great partnership with the community, but we also have a great partnership with the Phoenix Police Department. We have what's called the Neighborhood Safety Initiative, and we've had it for almost uh, eight years now. And if you compare stats from five years ago to today, crime around GCU is down almost 20%. So it's really working to keep not only the community around us, but our campus very safe. As a former Phoenix police chief and you served at the Maryville Precinct, what pride do you take in that factor that GCU right now is having an impact on the community when it comes to safety? Oh, it's great. I mean, housing prices are up. I mean, it's just a good vibe, just like in here. Everybody's excited and it's just a good place to work and it's a good place to come. And uh, it's a good, good evening tonight having our first responder appreciation night. Well, very often I am talking about the heroes of the game, but I just want to thank you and your staff and all you have done to serve the community and serve the campus. Thank, thank you. you, and have a great holiday with your families. All right, well, that was Joe, and when we come back, we'll be talking about uh, some of the other unsung heroes when it comes to the GCU team. These are shots you don't want to miss. That's when the Locust Green Game Show continues right after this. I'm Courtney and I'm earning a master's online at GCU in Christian ministry. My husband is in the military, so we move a lot. I really wanted a school that would support me no matter where I lived, and GCU was a great fit for that because although it's a rigorous program, I really enjoy that I get to do it on my time. Sometimes that's at a coffee shop, sometimes it's in my office. Faith is a big part of my life. I play violin in my church, and I get to express my gifts and worship God. I pray continually, and I just really try to seek God. I really wanted to go to a school that could highlight that and worship God freely, and GCU definitely gave me the platform to do that. Being an online learner at GCU, I've really made a personal investment in my own life that has given me such confidence to go into my field, not only to become an expert, but be a change agent for the world. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Holiday spirit and student spirit, well, they are colliding tonight here at GCU Arena. I want to let you know that it is holiday break here for students. A lot of them, uh, you know, kicked off campus in a nice way to go join their family for the holidays. But you want to know it by this lively crowd. The Havocs are in the house, Lopes fans in the house, all for the Northern Iowa Grand Canyon tilt. We're going to see what the teams have to take to the court. But first, I want to show you some of these trick shots by managers from the Panthers and from GCU. First of all, the Panthers managers, they tweeted this out that coach wanted to see some game shots from our game spots. So the managers, well, they sit behind the team bench. And normally they're just taking stats. No, they're doing much more than that. Look at that great shot. And so here now we have the Lopes team managers over the shoulder and in. That looks better than Scott Williams' half-court uh, attempt each game. Very impressive. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes to get both of these teams out there to play a game. And so hats off to those managers for making it fun. And uh, also tonight, first responders night here at GCU Arena. And while many of us are starting to think about our holidays with our family time, we do want to give a shout out to the 1,000 um, first responders in attendance tonight and their families. Thank you for all you do. And now thank you for spending tonight with us. Lopes Hoops up next.
one more member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes! Live from the heart and soul of Phoenix, welcome to the campus of Grand Canyon University and inside GCU Arena, where tonight the Lopes play host to the Panthers from Northern Iowa University. Good evening and welcome to GCU Basketball alongside three-time NBA champion Scott Williams. I'm Barry Butel. Kate Longworth will be along in just a moment. While the Lopes returning home from downtown Phoenix and the Colangelo Classic in a tough, tough loss to Liberty. Yeah, Liberty's playing some really good basketball no right now. And Lopes had the lead halfway through the second half, but then Liberty just put the clamps on them. They couldn't score for about six and a half minutes, and they went on a 15-0 scoring run, and that was all she wrote. Yeah, Labor and Carlos Johnson got into foul trouble, and Liberty remains unbeaten at 11-0. Leading the way, though, for the Lopes was Isaiah Brown. Isaiah Brown's been doing a little bit of everything for this team, getting on the glass. He can score inside and out. He can play good defense. He can bring the ball up the floor to take some pressure off the young freshman. Blackshear, but I like the fact that he's not afraid to attack the basket. Lopes aren't a great three-point shooting opportunity team, so when they got a guy that, like Brown that can get inside, create something for himself and his teammates, it's very helpful. And A.J. Green, this kid on the season, he's on the Lou Henson watch list, he's after 15 points a game, can really stroke her from the outside. Got a season high against the Lopes a year ago. Yep, 27 points in an 11-point victory by GCU a year ago, but the Panthers come in 9-1 and one on the season. Let's get it started. Let's send it down to our public address announcer, Paul Denuser, with our prayer and our national anthem. again to the beautiful GCU Arena for tonight's men's basketball matchup between the Panthers of Northern Iowa University and your Grand Canyon University Antelopes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you all please rise if you are able. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with a word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is led by Katie Wood, a junior majoring in business management and a third year member of the GCU Dancers. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all of the friends and family who could join us here tonight. I pray for safety over all of the players throughout the game and that everything done on this court tonight would be for your glory. It's in your name we, that we pray, amen. Thank you, Katie. Fans, please remain standing as we honor America with a presentation of the National Anthem. Tonight, the Star Spangled Banner will be performed by the Westview High School Choir under the direction of Lori Dixon.
Yeah, great job by Westview High School Choir. And our prayer from uh, Katie Wood from the GCU dance team. Iowa, Northern Iowa comes in 9-1 and one on the season. Their head coach is Ben Jacobson in his 14th season. Here are the Talking Stick Resort starting lineup for the Panthers. Spencer Haldeman, Isaiah Brown. Yes, they have one, too. Trey Burhow, A.J. Green, and Austin Fife. Yeah, we're going to keep our eye on Isaiah Brown. This is going to be the Battle of Browns tonight. <laughs> what can Brown do for you? Well, this kid right here is absolutely fantastic. Isaiah Brown. They're Isaiah Brown, that is. He, he can get it in space. He can shoot the ball. And, and we want to see what our Isaiah Brown can do against their Isaiah Brown tonight. 9-1 and one coming off a three-point victory at Colorado on Tuesday. Time now to introduce you to GCU. Head coach Dan Marley in his seventh season, 127 and 79 overall. Here are the starting five for head coach Dan Marley, brought to you by Talking Stick Resort. Playing style. Javon Blackshear Jr., Isaiah Brown, Carlos Johnson, Bryce Okpo, and Alessandro Labor. Now, we already talked about the Brown matchup, but also in addition, we want to look at Javon Blackshear Jr., emerging as a leader on this team and a floor general. Got to go up against another savvy senior guard tonight. So we'll see if the young freshman is up for the challenge. Associate head coach Marvin Menzies. The assistant coaches Chris Cremelone and Isaac Jew. Director of basketball operations Dylan Hidalgo. Special assistant to the head coach Johnny Hill. The video coordinator is Matt Lopez. Director of sports medicine Jordy Hackett. And the director of sports performance is Gabe Borland. Time now for the Sanderson Ford keys to the game. The best play on a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. Yeah, power balance tonight. You can attack on offense, but you've got to remain defensively sound. These Panthers can average 60, uh, excuse me, 76 points per game. And Ryan is fundamental. You gotta know your personnel. KYP. You stay true to the game plan, but stay flexible to in-game coaching adjustments by the coaching staff. And then unleash the havoc. I mean, we don't have our normal college kids tonight, but the young ones that they brought in have been absolutely live here in the pregame. So GCU's got the best student section in all of college basketball. Nothing gets them more fired up when the Lumps win the hustle game by diving on the floor for balls, play with emotion, and get the crowd into this game with explosive plays right from the beginning. It earned that home court advantage. Good crowd on hand, the students heading out on break. Many of them sticking around, of course, cheer, dance, band. All here to support the Lopes. The officials, Randy McCall, Jerry Pollard, and Burke Smith. Lopes fans will remain on their feet till they hit the opening bucket. Oak to take it for the Lopes. Against Fife. Underway and controlled by the Lopes. Blackshear. Labor goes to his left. Oakpo bounce pass. Johnson guarded by two Panthers. Back out to Labor. Near side. Blackshear comes back out. Oakpo in the corner. Johnson inside. Labor trying to turn on Fife. Big right hand. Doesn't go. I like the patience offensively, though. They got a good shot out of Labor. Strong left shoulder turn to his right hand hook. He gets plenty of those looks. That's going to be a good thing for the Lopes. Inside five. Wow. The only one on Labor, huh? I think it was Carlos, Carlos Johnson coming over on that weak side to help Labor. His, his guy rolled to the basket in that pick and roll situation. Size disadvantage, Johnson had to take the foul. 
Five, six, nine, 235, the red shirt, sophomore from Waverly, Iowa. Averaging 60% at the line, hits both. Just one. Johnson, bounce pass, later. Swarm by two Panthers, back out, Johnson. Brown into Blackshear, he wants three. You're going to double team Laver on that block. Both are going to have to get that ball out of that post area and swing, swing to find the open man quickly before he can be guarded. Isaiah Brown at three for the Panthers. Kick back out. Look out. Oh, way off the mark. Put back though by Trey Burrow. Trey Burrow tough break for the Lopes that time. I always say an offensive air ball is harder on the defense to get the rebound than it is actually the team playing defense. Rebounding margin, 4 nothing. early on. Laver leaves for Blackshear. He cuts in, dishes out into the corner for Brown. Big rebound. Johnson tried to save it. Panthers will inbound by their bench. Well, a couple good looks for the Lopes, but again, two of the three shots on the offensive end have been forced from the outside. So when you get that ball, maybe next time, if, you, if they think you're going to shoot the outside shot, maybe show them the ball like you're going to go up for the shot and then take them off the dribble drop. Kick back out, three-point attempt, short off the front of the rim, Blackshear. Just three nothing, Panthers on top of the Lopes early on. Lopes fans want to maybe take a seat here soon. Brown, blind pass. Hokbo leaves for Johnson. Three-pointer is off the mark. Oh, I got to give this Northern Iowa Panther team a lot of credit defensively. They're not allowing the Lopes to go inside. Oh, nasty. A.J. Green, a lethal. 32% from the arc. 26 of 79 now. Yeah, and straight away, plenty of time and distance to be able to size up and line up that shot. Blackshear. That's off. Yeah, just Carlos Johnson, only one on the glass. Driving with a sweet move, Trey Burrow. How? Yeah, Coach Marley needs a timeout, takes a timeout. I was after a made bat, a missed basket, which the defense balance didn't get back and protect the plane. But you can see right there, just the young freshman having a tough time on that, on that high drag screen. He goes underneath the screen. And that's going to be a big mistake against A.J. Green. And then this one here, just got to get back and find a man and transition defense and not give up the layup. Loves 0 for 5 from the field. Trail at 8 zip early on. Panthers red hot, 9 and 1 coming in. Only loss, a 5 point decision to West Virginia. Their head coach, Ben Jacobson, 14th season, all-time wins leader, 275 and 169, has guided the Panthers to four NCAA tournament appearances, four NCAA victories. He's a three-time Missouri Valley Conference Coach of the Year, former standout in East Grand Forks of the University of North Dakota. In the corner, Brown. Ooh, the weather outside is frightful. They're getting nothing from behind that arc right now. I don't know if that was the play coming out of the timeout, but I'd love to see them go inside on their next possession. Long distance. And connecting again, A.J. Green at 27 a year ago is their leading scorer coming in at 15 points per game. Yeah, they got to find him. He's already showing that he's hot from the uh, outside tonight. Blackshear and Aaron Pat, a shot up off the glass. Doesn't make it. Uh, he tried to get some body contact to earn a trip to the free throw line anyway to try to get a bucket. Missed there by Isaiah Brown for the Panthers. Better job that time defensively, getting the hand into the shooter's face for the track. Back out. Brown. 
Moves to his left. Kicks back to Labor. He's going to throw off a three. Fighting for it is Okpo. Nice job. Okpo fighting for that ball. Got it back. The arrow uh, possession belongs to the Lopes. Possession belongs to the Panthers, and so does an 11 point early lead. Part of my motivation of becoming a doctoral learner was so I could immediately start using the information that I was learning in the courses as a tennis coach here for my student athletes. I think that it set a good example for those around me to know that things can be accomplished. My name is Greg Prudholm, and I just defended my dissertation to earn a degree in performance psychology. There's a thunder in all of us. Come find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Curiosity fuels you. So when you're ready for a fulfilling new career, let your curiosity fuel that change. Grand Canyon University's online degree programs in technology make it convenient for you to achieve your dream. GCU teaches you how to plan for innovation. By applying that knowledge to today's most challenging problems, you're helping to build a better tomorrow. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. GCU men's basketball is brought to you in part by Sanderson Ford. The best play on a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. By BSN Sports, the largest provider of team sports equipment and apparel in the country. And by SRP, delivering water and power. Very detailed, Scott Williams, Kate Longworth, here from GC Arena in Phoenix, where the Panthers have delivered uh, some early blows here. Yeah, Coach Marley looking at that stat sheet. You see the same thing I'm seeing. They're 0 for 8 from the field, but they're 0 for 5 from behind the arc. Talk about this team shooting too many three-point shots, and then they, they, they got to figure out a way to attack that Panthers defense from inside. Started, started what, 0 for 8 against Liberty. Inside. A little bit too low for 5, went off of him. Well, that's good D right there. I mean, getting in there, being active with your hands, getting that deflection, and it comes up off the chest of Fife and out of bounds. So he kind of got that stuff. But the, these fans here want to see the Lopes get a bucket so they can get off their feet, take a seat. Yeah. Jenkins in for Oakpo. Brown, right hand, doesn't go. Oh, and the stoppings here early on for the Lopes. A little defensive pressure there, double team on A.J. Green out there, some 35 feet away from the basket. Not going to get burnt by that guy again, and Laver comes up with the deflection. 21 seconds to shoot, plenty of time to run their offense, So the Lopes will have to sit down and play solid D here, get another stop. Justin Dahl in the game, the seven-footer, 261 from Carver, Minnesota. Labor's going to pick it up. Nice job by Doobie Jenkins coming over with the double team. Forced a bad pass. Near side, Jenkins up over the top. Jenkins, left hand. And in! Thank you! Very nice, strong, aggressive post up by Jenkins down there in that right block. He just goes to that strong left, right shoulder turn on left hand look. Travel, nice job. Get Doobie out there, putting the pressure on the perimeter. Cause the turnover. That's a nice little boost of energy off the bench here. Look at this one one more time. No hesitation, knew exactly what he wanted to do. Go to his primary move and got a bucket. Going right back to him. Jenkins, another left hand in it. Derby, derby, do. Yeah, he's doing a nice job. He's getting his guy down there and really doing a wonderful job figuring out how the defense is going to play him. Like I say, those lefties are tough to figure out. They always want to take away the right hand. Well, he's a lefty. He's really good at going to his left. Ball's on another the floor. stop. That one I know is going to the lows. <laughs> I did that stuff twice. Come on. Lorenzo Jenkins coming into the game and. Stepping it up. Yeah, a little instant Spark. offense and some good defense. That's that's what you need. When you start as you're struggling, you go to your pine, you find somebody that can come in there and give you a boost. 
two for two from the field in two minutes. He's got four points. Brown near side, eyed by Green. Bounce passes Aaron, picked off by the Panthers. I don't know if Duke was going out to set a pick for Brown or what happened. A little miscommunication, but easy turnover that time from Panthers. They'll take that one. Kevin Sadal near side, three point attempt off the rim. A little bit chilly here for Northern Iowa. Yeah, that's about four or five stops in a row. I should be keeping track, but do a good job on the defensive end after a slow start. 311 and counting for the Panthers. Turn around, put back in by Labor. How about the footwork by the big man? A little up and under, dipsy do, and flipped it in. 6 0 run for the low, showing some life here. Four turnovers here for the Panthers. Lopes trying to claw back in. That's off. Ooh, off the Lopes. Look at how many times down defensively now the activity level on the defensive end is picked up for the team with the white shirts. They're getting their hands on balls, causing deflections, bouncing it off of other guys' chest, getting turnovers. Much better start than the first five minutes. J.J. Rimes checks in for Isaiah Brown for GCU. Got it. Oh, they mixed it up. They went to their zone defense. Coach Chu, the assistant coach, told me they were going to play some zone defense tonight. And here they are. They're extended 2 3 zone. They're going to try to take the ball out of the shooter's hand. Wow, oh, that's deep. Three. Oh, man. That was from a tumble. It, it was. He, he was standing somewhere between the, the letters out there on the floor. <laughs> AJ Green's got to go right now. We're going to have to extend that 2 3 zone all the way out to half court. Lorenzo Jenkins, his three off the mark. Green's got nine, three boards as well. Three of three from the field. Inside. Carried that ball, got away with it. Off the glass. Really carried that basketball and it froze labor just enough that he was able to come back the other way, snapped it off, and threw a hook right up over the top of the defense. Johnson. Hands it off to Blackshear, just beyond the key. Laver pulled down. Johnson trying to cut in. Moves to his left. Oh, careful. Shot, 10 on the shot clock would belong to GCU. Time out on the floor. Time out on the floor, 16 to 6. The Panthers on top of the Lopes here in this opening half. The Panthers are really doing a nice job. They beat the shot clock, knocks down his, the third triple of the first half. Move them out. It's a Ranger Roundup sale at Sanderson Ford. 44 Rangers down the stalls starting at 28.9. Head on in to Arizona's largest Ford dealership and head out in a new Ford. This is Sanderson Ford Country. About time you washed it. Getting ready to trade it in. What are you doing? Just a little shopping. Wait, a new truck. Don't you think I should be involved? Of course. We'll head over to Sanderson Ford as soon as I'm done. I don't have time today. Hope we're going with four doors this time. Ooh, of course. I know exactly what I want. I mean, we want a lightning blue Ford F-150 Super Crew with EcoBoost. All done. Shop from home, buy from home, we deliver. From the dealer you can trust, Sanderson Ford. Came through dripping, drip, drip. Came through dripping, drip, drip. Came through dripping, drip, drip. Tell me so my wrist ain't dripping. Ice. Came through dripping, drip, drip. Came through dripping. Mountain Dew Ice, a clear, refreshing lemon lime. Welcome back, Kate Longworth here at Psych GCU Arena, where right now the Lopes are down at 10, but it's still early under 12 to play with the Panthers in the lead. But not surprisingly that the Panthers are 9 and 1 this season. They have actually a great list when it comes to athletes who have been in the Northern Iowa program, starting with Bryce Bob, the former Packer, and Packer shout out, of course, to Scott Williamstein. Meanwhile, if you're into entertainment, you may have seen Mark Steins on Entertainment Tonight. Raptors head coach Nick Nurse, former Panther. And then uh, stop me if you've heard these names. A guy named Kurt Warner and David Johnson. Yes, that's right. They were also Panthers. Former Carl Warner was a 93 grad. He was third in the depth chart until his senior year. And then he went on to garner Offensive Player of the Year honors. Meanwhile, David Johnson recently named the Cards Walter Payton Man of the Year. And he did big things, setting big records for the Panthers as well. Picked off by the Panthers as J.J. Rimes was 
That's something that the Lopes did really good on Sunday against Liberty. They didn't get back down too much, but they took care of the basketball. Only eight turnovers in that game against Liberty on Sunday. They got to do a better job. They've got a couple turnovers here that have just kind of been unforced errors. 7 0 run after the Lopes went on a 6 0 run. By Rhymes. How about Rhymes and Rhythm the Rhyme? I like this kid right here. Hard hat, lunch pail kind of a player. Just a couple bangs inside there. Sticks the ball right to the chin of the defender. Still figures a way to muscle it into the hole. Make it a three point play, JJ Rhymes. Sometimes that's what you need. You need a couple guys come off that bench. You know, Rhymes, Doobie, John, uh, uh, Doobie Jenkins provide a little bit of a spark while the starters are struggling. And then sooner or later, the starters find their game. That's what, the, that's what they're doing. They just got to fight through this tough stretch here, figure out how to fight their fight through this, maybe make a little bit of a run towards the end of half, to give them some momentum coming out of that locker. Brown comes back in for a GCU for Blackshear. Turning his fights. Nice job. Nine the backboard cut. Burhau tries to drive his foul there. A tough one on Labor. Trying to avoid the foul, but he's running alongside a smaller defender out there on the perimeter. But that's one where you realize that I'm in a bad way. I need to go ahead and take this foul sooner than try to go and just play with my hands straight in the air and then give it up right at the rim. They go ahead and foul him early. Make him take his side out of bounds or baseline out of bounds and not give up the two free throws. GCU starters with two points, the bench with seven. They gotta get Brown going. Carlos Johnson, Carlos. I'd like to see him heat up. You know, my guy Labor, he's had a stretch where he's had some nice double digit scoring games. Gotta get him going. Feed the big man. Brown stops, pops, nothing but net. Brown like working off of the elbow area on the floor. Haldeman. Five, back to Haldeman. Long three, good. Nasty. Right. Good. You talk about casting from long distance. These guys are unafraid to shoot the ball some three to four, sometimes even five feet from behind the arc. They're four of nine here in the first half. And boy, I tell you, I can't remember the five that they missed. Seems like every time they throw it up, it goes in. Johnson, he puts it on the floor, drives, kicks back out. J.J. Rhymes in the paint, stops, goes left, right, left hand, doesn't go. Pulled down by the Panther. There Isaiah Brown brings it up. He's for five, he moves left. He's it there. Burhau, rebound, kicked out and into the hands of five. Haldeman a long three again. Big rebound. Burhau down low. Left hand off the glass and making it look easy. Yeah, they're out working the lopes on that possession anyway. Uh, just those long threes cause long rebounds. They're not putting bodies on guys. They're turning and going the pass, and his balls are bouncing back over their head. Screen out, put a body on a guy. Even if you don't get it, don't make sure your guy doesn't get it. Brown drives baseline. Doesn't go. A oh, couple shots in there in that painted area and they haven't been able to finish. In the corner, bounce pass into Fife, little floater up over the top. Boy, they are quick with that basketball. Yep. With, it, with the dribble drive, penetration, or shooting the ball along the perimeter, they are just moving the ball better than Lopes here in this first half. It's a different gear for the Panthers and the Lopes are showing here. Brown, Labor, throws up the three. That's off the mark. I like Labor shooting the three, but that was one of those ones where he caught it and he kind of was, had his left shoulder to the basket instead of being squared to the hoop. Yeah, he and then he tried, he tried to get it up and he was just off. He was trying to bring that right shoulder around. He left it about a foot short. Brown up over the top, out of bounds. Belong to GCU. 8.27 to go. All Panthers here early on. Coming in nine and one on the season. Well, you know, Coach Marley knew Coming in, he's playing a real hot team right now. But he, he wants to try to keep this game close. 16 point disadvantage is not keeping it close. Got to try to figure a way to get this thing down into single digits come halftime. Labor takes a seat. Hook in. 
He's in the corner. He leaves for Brown. Brown back out. Jenkins. Jenkins blacks here. Moves to his right. Looking to move. Stops. Pops. In and out. Got cellophane on that basket. They got a couple shots that have just been wide around the rim, but unable to fall. Oh, no. Wide open shooter on the left wing. Not there. Blacks are able to pick up the rebound. Leaves for Blackshear. Bounce pass. Jenkins guarded by two Panthers. Quickly, Brown in the corner. Okpo back to Brown. 13 on the shot clock. Brown in the paint, kicks out. J.J. Rhymes in and out. Panthers. Got to cut in, back out. Back to the basket. Kicked out. Playing catch. High low. Long distance off the mark into the hands of Brown. That was really good defense that time. Blackshear didn't let his smaller uh, teammate there get posted up. He kept causing havoc down on that block and finally got them to throw the ball back outside before shot. Jenkins! How about Dugan Jenkins? How about Dugan Jenkins here in the first half? He's doing a great job. Three or four shooting, got seven points, got a couple steals, good defense. I really like the way he's come in. The trouble without him on the court here early on. Labor at the scorer's table. Down low. Swatted away by Okpo. Justin Dahl trying to put it home. You see Okpo come across from the weak side quite a bit to cause some havoc. Time out on the floor. 6.35 to go. It's been Northern Iowa here in the opening half 27 to 14 over GCU as uh, GCU's uh, opponents their combined record is some 75 and 43 they've taken on two teams that remain unbeaten in Liberty and also San Diego State and then they have a 9 and 1 Northern Iowa team that has gone on three separate runs here in the half 11 7 and 7 yeah they're on fire they're shooting the long ball they're really just causing D GCU to have a tough tough sled inside I don't know where Coach Marley's going to go to find a way to get his starters going, but you got to think Labor down on that block got that one earlier in the game. If they can get him down there where he's not getting double teamed, uh, or if he does get double teamed to be able to find a way to pass out, then it would be a, a good thing for the Lopes to happen. But, you know, that energy off that bench has been a plus. Uh, Doobie Jenkins is doing a real nice job, and that's that one I was talking about, Labor down on that block. But seven... Uh, of the 14 points coming from Jenkins, you got a J.J. Rhymes doing good. You got 10 points off the bench. You and I, they're just getting the starters for you and I are getting it done. They don't got one, not one bench point, but the starters are on fire. Check that, that's 76 and 43, a combined record. And as I mentioned, the Lopes have played two of the five remaining unbeaten teams, Liberty and San Diego State. Mikey Dixon set to return at New Mexico for GCU before returning back here at home to take on Eastern Illinois. And then you look to January in the start of conference play for GCU. We hope for good things to report as far as Oscar Freyer is concerned as well. received official word from Freyer as of yet, but we're hoping for the best. I was, down there, for I was down there talking to those guys. I was going to tell them, hoping to see, see them back on the floors. They go back inside to their big guy, and he was darn near flushing that one. they got to start figuring out a way to, <laughs> to make this team play in the yard. They're either getting three-point shots or they're playing in the paint. So the paint's that area. That's the house. Outside the three-point line, that's the street. So you want to try to get them somewhere between the paint and the three-point line. That's the yard. No one gets hurt in the yard. Okay. So you keep the kids in the yard, make them play in there. Yeah, GCU will be okay. Make them shoot tough twos and then rebound the basketball. Try to get some transition buckets. See, any basket they get or miss this shot that they take, the Lopes aren't able to turn those into transition buckets the other way. With either their fast break or their secondary break. Panthers are lethal from the street. 
Labor from the street. <laughs> well, you know what? Sometimes you just gotta pull a page out of your opponent's book. <laughs> Alessandro Labor knocking one down from long distance. Lopes needed that. Burhau, he lost it. He didn't lose it. Blackshear Black took it. <laughs> Labor turns. Pulls down, drives. Double team back out. Blackshear quickly. Johnson, Brown. Travel. I want to see that. That's the drive you got to get. It's because here you're catching the defense in a long rotation, but you just got to be able to do it without uh, traveling. And that's that's that beautiful one there by Labor. They tried to go back to him on the block. But they're just going to double team the big fella anytime he catches it down on that block. Folks got to get Johnson involved here. 0 for 1 from the field. No points. Inside ball. See that? that was a nice move That's by the big. Let's give credit where credit is due, because due, he went right around Labor like he was a fence post. That big fella's got to move his feet. Ah. Stuck in the mud or something. Labor turns, top of the key. Puts it down, drive, right hand. That doesn't go. Uh, Labor tried to get, go right back at him. I like that. Take it inside, another key shot. Raymond, rare miss. Blackshear on the run. Kicked out, Brown lost it. Fuck. Now there's that break opportunity we were just talking about. Blackshear so quick with that ball from top of the key to top of the key. Finds his guy, Brown, on that left wing. Doesn't settle for the mid range shot. Takes it to the rack, gets the body contact. It's going to go to the line and shoot a couple. Brown at the line, 87% free throw shooter. Three-point shot that GCU makes. Canyon State Credit Union will make a donation to the Students Inspiring Student Scholarship. For more information, go to giving.gcu.edu. Brown connects on both. Three of 16 from the field are the starters and nine points. The bench four of seven with ten. Five minutes to play. It's a 12-point game. You can, little season, can they figure out a way to get it to nine, eight, maybe seven here before the end of the half? Oh, look at that pass. Not playing defense like that. Just ran off the high post and got picked off enough that no one comes over and hits the roll guy and just lays the ball in the bucket so softly. Get tough out there, Lopes. Green's got 11. Last year, Johnson. Back to Javon. Short. Nobody contesting any rebounds down there. No, they're not getting on that offensive glass like I would have thought they wanted. They would. Yeah, I don't understand that when we talk about defense and balance, but you got to send two guys to the bucket to the, to the boards. Twenty-one to six rebounds. Five. That's not getting it done. Awesome. I know it's hard to get defensive rebounds when they're constantly putting it in the basket, but. They've had some opportunities to get some offensive rebounds. There's nothing but black shirts on that defensive glass. Brown to Green. Green, eyed by Blackshear. Moves out. Bounce pass. Fight. A little low for the big man, but he picks it up. He's got time. Showed some good hands there. He kind of lost it for a second, but so quick to that basketball and then softly off the glass. This is getting ugly. It is. Blackshear, Johnson in the corner. Kick back out. Brown, inside, Jenkins. Jenkins, nice move on Burhau, doesn't drop, picks up the rebound, and he gets the open arm. There's an offensive board, the second chance point, the first offensive rebound for the Lopes, and it ends with a Jenkins little lefty flip shot over the top of the defender with the foul. 37-21, Jenkins definitely has stepped it up for the Lopes in the opening half.
Find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. School's out for winter, but that doesn't mean the athletes at home. If you take a look at our BSN athletic calendar, well, you'll see that women's basketball is in action. Nicole Powell's team hosting UNLV on Monday. Meanwhile, Tuesday, Dan Marley's squad takes the trip over to New Mexico. Thursday, women's basketball back in action against UC Santa Barbara. And then Saturday, we'll be right here with you on Fox 10 Extra as the looks go up against Eastern Illinois. And then on Sunday, women's basketball has Whittier. Just a reminder, it is holiday break here at GCU. But as Scott Williams will tell you, athletes, well, they never rest, right? That's right. <laughs> hey, if you're not working, someone's out working you. That's how I used to think about it. I, I didn't have the I didn't have the talent or the skill I had to try to outwork everybody. I didn't take it a day off was a day that I gained an opportunity. Jenkins at the line. Doobie Jenkins saved the play tonight. Did he? He's got tonight. Is that 10 for Doobie? 10, yeah. He just needs some brothers. He just needs some brothers. He got Doobie. We need the Doobie brothers. <laughs> he needs a couple <laughs> buddies to help him out out there. Green. Pickford. Inside, paint, stops, pops, Pickford, not there, stop by Layla. He shall not pass. Nice defensive play there by Layla. Inside, Jenkins got some time. Lorenzo Jenkins. How about low Jenkins tonight? <laughs> he even got Coach Jake calling the timeout. Wait, he's beasting him down low. Coach Jacobson with a rare timeout there. Another one time here. Alessandro Labor says you shall not pass. And then a great snap pass by Brown to the low block. And Jenkins is just making everybody feel good the way he's playing. Called him in a little late to the party for the Panthers. That's the start. I mean, it was 31 19. And then you and I went on a 6 0 run. But here comes the Lopes back with their own little 5 0 mini spurt. Because who's going to be able to dominate the last 238 and take some momentum to the locker room, in my opinion? I know the Panthers will feel good about the lead, but if the Lopes can just do something right here to put on a little bit of a spurt, they'll feel like they still got an opportunity to catch up with the second half. With a press on the inbound. Haldeman. Green. Brown for the Panthers. Back to Green. Looked inside, Brown steps in, back in the corner. Burhau. Jenkins took his mind, uh, his eye off Burhau just for the slightest moment, and that's all it took for him to cast that three. I see what his team had 76 oh, tonight. Nice pass this time from lower Lorenzo to Isaiah Brown. Yeah, repay the favor. First it was Brown giving it to Jenkins. This time Jenkins finds the cutting Brown back door. Labor with five points, Johnson with none. Bounce pass inside, up over the top. Got the height advantage. Fife over Johnson. And Just one more time here, right by the ear hole, the defender goes right back door, gets that bucket. I got to teach Johnson how to foul down there on the defensive end, though, because I, you know, I, I still have the record for the most fouls in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Still hold up some 30 years later. Well, I'd take a foul and make sure that the guy would have to take it side out of bounds. Oh, they did the side out of bounds. Okay. So nice go. job. Oh. Knocked out. I was really good at making sure my fouls were smart fouls. Yeah, if you're going to take somebody out, you're going to do it, you know, smart. Yeah, well, I'm not going to give up an and one. I'm going to make sure I get enough contact where they can't get it in the basket. And if I can get a chance to foul a guy before he shoots the ball, I definitely would like to do that. Blackshear leaves for Brown. Brown steps back. Got some help from Labor. Labor receives the pass and then he gives it away. Ooh, Brown able to gather it in for the Panthers. 112 and counting the long three. Oh, yes, for you and I. Yeah, two 
Back-to-back -back three point shots off the wings. That's a backbreaker here. The Lopes were trying to put together a little something. They had a 5-0 run, now all of a sudden they come back with their, their own 6-0 run. There's been these little 7-0s, 5-0s, 6-0 runs by both squads, but unfortunately, Lopes started down by 12 points to start the game. Brown. Oh, look at him smother that. Brown took a fall down there. Yeah, Northern Iowa, they waste no time. Everybody's back defensively, but nobody finds the shooter in the corner. He passes the ball some 50 feet to a guy down there in, in the coffin corner. That's where these guys love shooting the ball from. That's where the Lopes love shooting the ball from. They should be able to find that guy in transition. J.J. Rhymes inbound, 45 seconds on the clock, eight on the shot clock. Quickly, Jenkins looks for three. One there. They're trying to play where we can get two shots on the offensive end to you and I's one. That's why the quick shot, but you got to be able to at least hit the iron from out there. Alderman, live by Blackshear. On the move. Cuts in. Stops. Pops. Cuts off the mark. Brown. Yeah, perfect. So it worked out. They'll get two shots and the Panthers one. They got a good opportunity to set up their go to play here to end the half. Let that ball roll up a bit. Clock is still moving. Jenkins. Brown, three-pointer attempt. That's way off the mark. At the buzzer, and you and I on top. 43 to 26 at the half. Yeah, starters didn't come to play tonight. They got a little bit of boost from the guys off the bench. But they're gonna have to go in that locker room and find their game. Let's set it down courtside. Kate Longworth with head coach Dan Marley. All right, thank you guys. Well, coach, uh, what challenge was your team up against when the Panthers started off with this 11-0 run? Well, 11-0 run defensively, we were awful, not tough enough. Uh, then down there, we're just again, we're not making any shots, just not being tough either way. You know, going down there, not taking the contact, finishing down here, they're doing whatever they want. So, just a, you know, we got to fix it in the second half, obviously. To draw a positive from it, Jenkins right now, 12 points in the first half. What do you see feeling his play? I don't care. I mean, he's got to do a better job down here. Everybody does. I mean, we're just doing a poor job down here defensively. Makes sense. Thank you so much, Coach. Obviously, it's going to be some harsh words from Coach Marley with his team down right now at the break, 43-26. What will they do second half? Well, only time will tell. Meanwhile, we'll be right back with more Lopes Halftime Show coming your way. Move them out. It's a Ranger Roundup sale at Sanderson Ford with a herd of 44 Rangers now in the stalls starting at 28 9 Want a little more beef? How about a stampede of Ford Raptors? 35 now available. Or giddy up in a Ford Mustang for only 22 9 They have a corral full of ponies. Head on into Arizona's largest Ford dealership and head out in a new Ford. This is Sanderson Ford Country. I'm Courtney and I'm earning a master's online at GCU in Christian ministry. My husband is in the military, so we move a lot. I really wanted a school that would support me no matter where I lived, and GCU was a great fit for that because although it's a rigorous program, I really enjoy that I get to do it on my time. Sometimes that's at a coffee shop, sometimes it's in my office. Faith is a big part of my life. I play violin in my church, and I get to express my gifts and worship God. I pray continually, and I just really try to seek God. I really wanted to go to a school that could highlight that and worship God freely, and GCU definitely gave me the platform to do that. Being an online learner at GCU, I've really made a personal investment in my own life that has given me such confidence to go into my field, not only to become an expert, but be a change agent for the world. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Welcome back to the Lopes Halftime Show. It's a crowd favorite tonight. Christian and Scooby are performing at halftime, and they're putting on a show. The Lopes, however, they... They had a tough time in the first half with the Panthers right now. The score 43-26. Kate Longworth welcome you back to the show here on Fox 10 Extra. And I'm joined now by a very special guest, Chief Jerry Williams. Thank you so much for being here. GCU celebrating first responder night. Over 1,000 first responders and families in attendance tonight. And I just want to talk 
to you about the partnership that GCU has been able to establish with uh, the police department here and what they've been able to give back to the community. What kind of impact have you seen from GCU? So the, so the impact is a true partnership between the Phoenix Police Department and the GCU team. We have a neighborhood security initiative that we're working on with Chief Yana, who's here, who used to be the Phoenix chief. Hi, Joe. Um, but it's really about partnerships and relationships and really engaging our community. When you look around, it's nothing but energy and great community engagement. Yeah, hey, Joe, I actually had a chance to talk with Joe earlier today, and he was saying, much like the energy you see in here, he's seen that spill out into the community. Oh, That's absolutely. So it, it, is, it is one team, one voice, one initiative. We can't do it alone because there's not enough of us around. But the community, GCU, and its partnership is amazing. And I know for the university, it was important for them to have you out tonight as they celebrate first responders. But I'm guessing, knowing your love for basketball, they didn't have to twist your arm. No. Your son, Alan, of course, went on to play for the Suns here. Your husband played college yes. basketball. What's it like for you tonight to be sitting so, courtside? So it, it was like being back at a college basketball game. So the energy, the fun, the excitement, and to be honest, from a parent perspective, the nervousness that, and the energy that the players have, I'm just I'm blessed and fortunate to be here. And I want to thank you and your entire department and really all first responders out there. I think this month especially, we're all thinking about spending time with our families for the holiday season. And that's only possible because of the sacrifice each man and woman gives for this community. What do you have to say about the sacrifice and also the benefits when you serve your community? So that, that, let's talk about the sacrifice first. We miss weekends, holidays, birthdays, you name it. But at the end of the day, the intrinsic value of service is what law enforcement and public safety is about. So I'm proud of the men and women in blue, black, brown, green, whatever, um, who really put their lives on the line. And let's not forget the firefighters. Absolutely, and being a female sports reporter here in the Phoenix Valley, it's been such a treat to see both you and Chief Pope Runner serving in the community. Right. And I just wonder, what is your relationship like with her? So Kara and I have known each other since literally grade school. Kara, this is for you, sweetie. I wish you nothing but battle. Go kill it. Go take care of business. And we got your back when you come back. Um, does uh, is suffering right now from breast cancer, but we wish her the best in her fight. And on a day where we are covering the heroes of the game, we are just so thankful for the true heroes in life. Thank you so much, Chief Williams, for joining us. We'll be back with much, much more on the Halftime Show coming your way. Lopes Halftime Show continues right after this. Come be part of the fastest growing professional network at Grand Canyon University by enrolling as an evening student at our vibrant campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors in small classroom settings one night a week and become part of the Young Professionals Network at GCU. Find your purpose. Sign up to attend our info session on November 7th at 5.30 p.m. at gcu.edu slash evening. Find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. Well, who doesn't love Scooby and Christian? Christian and Scooby. Although Scooby should get top billing. I mean, look at that. We got a doobie. We Doobie's do doing doobie. work. Doobie and Scooby <laughs> are doing all the work. Unfortunately for GCU, it's the uh, Chihuahua and uh, Doobie Lorenzo Jenkins that are pretty much uh, the highlights for GCU here at GCU Arena. Barry Butel, Scott Williams back with you after a 43-26 half that, uh, boy, Northern Iowa. They're going to be an interesting team to watch. They come in 9-1, and one and uh, they don't do they don't make a lot of mistakes. They can play. They yeah. share the basketball. They move it around. They play as a team on the offensive end. 
They can shoot the ball from the outside. They got great cuts to the basket. They can feed their big guy inside, who's very capable. And then on the defensive end, they are double teaming the post and playing good defense and closing out on the shooters on the perimeter. Let's check out our first half highlights. Brought to you by SRP, delivering water and power. Lorenzo Jenkins been the big story for GCU. It'd be really in a deep hole if Low Jenkins had not come in here and done what he did because he's been fantastic. That uh, left-hand hook has been devastating. He's knocked down a couple outside shots. He's played some solid defense. So I just like that he's just like, I'm just going to put my hat, hard hat on and take on all comers in black jerseys. And I think that's what Coach Marley was getting to at the half. The time interview was, we just need some guys to play harder out there on the floor. Look, uh, Doobie Jenkins did that. First half stats brought to you by Commonwealth Insurance. The way insurance should be, 55% from the field are the Panthers. Six of 16 from the arc. Rebounding margin, my goodness. It doesn't seem like they've missed 10 from behind the arc. It seems that like every true. time they throw it up, it goes in. But the rebounding margin is really bad. I mean, the, the starters only have 11 points for the Lopes. The bench has got 15. So those guys got to pick it up to start this second half. 55% shooting for the opponent for a Lopes team is not going to make Coach Marley happy. Uh, I know this is a good quality basketball team, but he doesn't expect people to come in here on his floor and shoot 55%. Look for them to be more active defensively here in the second half. We'll see if they come out a little bit more fire in their belly. Kate will be back with more of our halftime festivities from GCU Arena, where the Lopes trail the Panthers 43 to 26. Curiosity fuels you. It helps you understand the world around you. It's your guide through life. So when you're ready for a fulfilling new career, let your curiosity fuel that change. Change is difficult, but Grand Canyon University's online degree programs in technology make it convenient for you to achieve your dream. While businesses are being transformed by artificial intelligence and analytics, GCU teaches you how to plan for innovation and make sense of the world. By applying that knowledge to today's most challenging problems and sharing your insights, you're helping to build a better tomorrow for you, your community, and your family. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. GCU. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. They're 9 and 1 so far this season at GCU, getting a first hand look at why Northern Iowa is so tough right now. The score at the break 43 to 26. And really, the Panthers bringing a balanced attack tonight with three players with 11 points to their name and making it hard for Lopes to defend such. And Although Lorenzo Jenkins has 12 points leading all scores right now, when I just talked to Dan Marley moments ago, he said, really, that does not matter if the team is not defending. These are, of course, your first half leading scores brought to you by the Streets of New York Pizza. Well, Dan Marley, I'm sure, had a message for his team just moments ago inside the locker room. They're back out on the court now, ready for a second half play. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, Barry and Scott will be with you to bring you the duration of the game. Coming at you live here on Fox 10 Extra from GCU Campus. I'm Courtney and I'm earning a master's online at GCU in Christian ministry. My husband is in the military, so we move a lot. I really wanted a school that would support me no matter where I lived, and GCU was a great fit for that because although it's a rigorous program, I really enjoy that I get to do it on my time. Sometimes that's at a coffee shop, sometimes it's in my office. Faith is a big part of my life. I play violin in my church, and I get to express my gifts and worship God. I pray continually, and I just really try to seek God. I really wanted to go to a school that could highlight that. 
and worship God freely, and GCU definitely gave me the platform to do that. Being an online learner at GCU, I've really made a personal investment in my own life that has given me such confidence to go into my field, not only to become an expert, but be a change agent for the world. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Curiosity fuels you. So when you're ready for a fulfilling new career, let your curiosity fuel that change. Grand Canyon University's online degree programs in technology make it convenient for you to achieve your dream. GCU teaches you how to plan for innovation. By applying that knowledge to today's most challenging problems, you're helping to build a better tomorrow. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Northern Iowa on top of GCU, 43 to 26. The Panthers, Kate just mentioned, coming in 9 and 1. Just knocked off the 24th ranked Buffaloes up in Boulder, Colorado. In a three point decision. But the Lopes, well, the beginning at least we know for sure 100%. Mikey Dixon. He returns and he's waited a long time. The transfer from St. John's University, the sharpshooter, is going to be returning at New Mexico. Yeah, we're really looking forward to getting this guy back because here, here's a guy that can score the basketball. At his freshman year, he was one of the top 15 scorers uh, as a freshman in the nation. So he can fill it up from both mid range. And be able to drive to the basket. He's wiry, he's quick, and he's not afraid of contact. There you see Mikey Dixon. Wait must have been grueling. Transfer. Waiting word officially about Oscar Freyer as well. He appears optimistic. Just don't have anything official to report here tonight. Now, another thing on Michael Dixon, he can shoot the three. I, I think he got a mid-range game, but he's a 43% shooter in sophomore year, albeit it was cut a little short because of an injury. But you go out there, you can knock down 13 to 30. He shows an ability to be able to knock down a long one. The Lopes fans back on their feet, hoping to take a uh, seat a little bit earlier than they did the opening half. And they Panthers went out on a big run. 11 0 run, I believe, to start the game. Panthers will have it to begin the opening half as the look started 0 for 9. Begin the half. See how they respond here early on. Fife turns to the bucket on Labor. Trying to drive that left shoulder. Lost it. Blackshear picked it up. Good sign here early on. Labor is doing it again now. A couple big defensive stops by Labor. Sitting down and playing that D in that post. Hands it off to Brown. Bounce pass into Labor. Leaves for Johnson to get him going. Cuts in. Back out. Lay it for Blackshear. Off the mark. Rebound. Uncontested fight. Oh, look at here. I tried to snap it off, kind of like old Bob Lanier used to do with those long outlet passes. The problem was his teammate wasn't looking for the ball. Watch here. Labor. Three. Big rebound. Oh, Poe able to gather it in. Back out. Watch here. Johnson. Eyes labor there for a second. Brown back out. Labor six on the shot clock. Keep an eye on that. Johnson turned the corner. Johnson with a bucket. Lopes fans can take a seat. Hopefully that's just a sign of things to come. Yeah, Lopes Johnson. I don't know how he got as far from the middle of that lane as he did, but uh, somehow he's just emerged from the other side right at the basket. Oh, countered with a three by Alderman. Takes it from Blackshear, turns to the bucket. Brown. Gonna move around Green. Step back, bounce pass. Labor in the paint. 
He steps back and puts it in. Got the buckets by Lopes. Sorry, Barry. I thought Brown should come off that screen a little harder and attack the basket, but he did a nice job of setting Laver up, letting him get it down there, establish that position down low. Uh oh. They foul three point shooter. Yes, they did. Brown. Oh, Carlos oh, said you can't foul a three point shooter. Look at this one more time here. Carlos Johnson, he somehow got all the way to the basket. Maybe an extra hop, I'm not sure. Uh, but then again, back inside, well, I thought Brown should have been more aggressive. He's trying to get his big fellow off down there on that block. He sets him up five feet from the basket. Labor did the rest. Called him an 82% free throw shooter. Yeah, he can look these. He's kids. They get to the line, they don't miss. The Lopes has been doing a really nice job getting to the free throw line. Dude, they're in the top 50 in the nation in free throw shooting. I saw that stat today when I was going through my notes. That's, that's impressive. They just got to earn more trips to the line. Alderman made that look easy. Early on, 18 minutes to go, second half. Kick back out, Brown. Labor. Blackshear, Brown looks for three. Just doesn't go. In and out. I don't know how many times the loads are shot tonight, but that ball seems like it's gone halfway in and back out. There's a Got a turnover? Yeah, carried the basketball down on that right wing there, trying to make a move. Just one more time here, just right there. Yep. Tried to freeze Laver and then take it hard to the off the dribble drive, but this is right on top of that one. Tough when you do it right in front of the official. Yeah, not very crafty on that one. Ten turnovers for you and I, four for GCU. Johnson in the drive, stopped by Green. Yeah, so good, scrambling out of that double team. Not the anything shut easy. down. Yep. Now he regroups, takes it. Look at that, the patience. He's gonna back it up, put it into another gear and go. I like that. A little, okay, you got me. No, you don't got me. I'm going to the bucket. That, you know, freshman, probably when he is 10 games into this thing. Or, you know, he's really wise behind, beyond his years, but they go back inside and draw a foul on the on the offensive end. Blackshear one more time. Okay, I'm not gonna do anything. I'll back away. Oh, wait a minute. If you pump, bite on that little bit of a pump fake there, I'll go right past it. Johnson with the foul. Nice. Going to the line, big fella. He's had a heck of a game tonight as well. Three fouls on Carlos. Oak Poe, near side, Brown, hired by Green, back out to Blackshear. Alderman had him, they switch it up. Burhau, off back and Blackshear, nails it. That's what Blackshear needed. He just needed that little bucket to go inside and comes back and knocks down an outside shot. He gets a rebound. Alderman with a rare three-point miss. Look at Easy up to Carlos. Oh, it doesn't go. Let me go back to this one before uh, uh, Blackshear there. Just does a nice job. Don't want to give up the dribble drive twice, so you back up a little too much. The young fella makes you pay. And I like that last one by Blackshear. He only got that rebound, and he pushed the ball like a bullet to the other end. Oh, I thought Carlos Johnson got fouled in the act of shooting, but... Lopes will have to take a baseline out of bounds and see if they can get a fucking car away. Lopes comes out, takes it from Labor. Black shield. Stops, pops, short, rebound, loose ball. Picked up by Blackshear. Yeah, Black Black Shear got Labor. it, but Labor was down there poking it out. Labor, baseline, glass, in the bucket! That's a nice power move there by Labor. He said, I'm not going to hold the ball to the double team comes this time. I'm going to go quick to the baseline. Picked off! Isaiah Brown to the glass and in! Fans up on their feet trying to get the Lopes back into this one. Well, they love the energy and the passion with the Lopes have shown here the last couple of moments. 6 0 1, and they're doing it on the defensive end. In the corner, kicked out. Yeah. 
Green. Right hand high, hoop and a harm. Brown. Son of a coach, I'll tell you what, just a smart basketball play by Green that time. A little hesitation dribble, then he goes to the bucket. But look at this one by Labor there. Just a strong right shoulder turn, goes to the basket, then they get the turnover, and Brown's off to the races. Lopes trying to claw their way back into it. We'll be right back. For highlights, the Iowa's content news story. One more member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes. November is known for Thanksgiving and Black Friday sales. Sanderson Ford is changing Black Friday to Blue Friday to show our support for law enforcement. Purchase a new expedition with 0% financing for 72 months, plus $7,000 cash back. Save 20% off on EcoSport, Escape, Edge, Fusion, and Fiesta. Similar savings on over 500 trucks in stock. Plus, get a ring doorbell to help protect your family and our community. Don't miss the Blue Friday sales event on now at Sanderson Ford. GCU basketball is brought to you in part by Sanderson Ford. The best play at a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. By BSN Sports, the largest provider of team sports equipment and apparel in the country. And by SRP, delivering water and power. Campus of Grand Canyon University, West Phoenix. Northern Iowa on top of the Lopes here in the second half. 15-25 to go. Got a little distracted on the dance cam. Dad dance cam. So they just of, did the dad dance game. Yeah, I missed it. A little bit of overbite action, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I always liked the dad dance team. I played in that Dallas Mavericks. They used to bring the dads, like a group of dads, down on the floor. Heavy set guys. Heavy set guys, yeah. And uh, they, they would do these routines. It was Fans ate it up. They loved it. In the labor. Hey, hey. Kicked out, Brown open for three. Oh, not there, pulled down by the Panthers. Here comes Haldeman. Near side, A.J. Green, their leading score. Two of 17 from three-point land. Ooh, oops. Box here on the floor, kicked out. I was hoping Labor wasn't gonna shoot that one. Uh-oh, we got a man down. Right. Hold not sure jaw. his jaw his hit ear. the floor. I don't know if his jaw or his ear, it's on the left side of his head, that's all I know. Maybe got an elbow in, the, in that scrum down there for the ball. Yeah, I think He's the Lopes knew it too. It's Haldeman. Look at this one more time. It's Blackshear so quick to the basket, and then they both go down there for the ball. I don't. Seems like he got hit on the other side of the head. He's holding. He got a hit on the right side of his head, but he's holding the left side of his head. So I'm not quite sure when he got popped. Go rub some dirt on it. He'll be back. Once again, I got some ringing, ringing in his ears. In his ears. <laughs> That's what it seems like, right? He's squinting his eyes like his ear. It's pretty loud. His yeah. ears are ringing. I know I go home some night after uh, being in this arena. My ears are ringing. I didn't even hit that side of his face. Anything to do with the right side, but he reaches for the left. Maybe the draw was hit on the right. I put a little gauze in his mouth. He got maybe a cut lip. Who knows? He'll be back, I guarantee you. Tough from the Midwest. Oh, did I tell you I was from the Midwest? <laughs> yeah, you, you've mentioned that a few yeah. times. The state above. Gotta have it. Oh, not there. That's that. That's that one. Like if you're gonna shoot that, you're two for 17. Whatever that number was, two for 18. If you're gonna two shoot for a lot. Two for. If you're gonna make the, yeah, shoot that shot down 16, you gotta get something going. You gotta figure out a way to get that one in the hole. Can't keep casting from the outside thinking. All of a sudden, those shots from the outside are going to start falling. You're down 16 points. Drive that ball to the basket. Try to get something inside. 
You don't get anything for yourself. And then maybe you kick it for one of your teammates out on the perimeter. Brown's got a few deflections on that perimeter. A couple steals. He's not scoring, but he's still trying to do some things to help his team get on a little mini spurt. They, that's what they need. They need a little 6-0, 8-2 run. Six deals for the Lopes. Ball takes it back off the glass and in. Just that pick and roll. They, they just, just a little side screen, and they roll him to the basket. And a number of times they've been able to find him with precision passes. Labor in the corner for Johnson. Another three. Another miss. Up there and Brown for on Green Row. Pickford. Good D. Oh, they couldn't finish it off of getting controlling the ball, but Brown did a real, excuse me, Johnson did a really nice job defending the right wing. Hustle, hustle, hustle. Ball able to pick it up. Long range shot oh, there by no. Isaiah Brown for the Panthers. With the shot clock down to four, <laughs> he realized it and just Wasted a shot like everything else tonight. Somehow it managed to go in to cap off an 8 0 run. Away from the wall. Dahl called for the foul away from the wall. Coach Jacobson to a great start here in his. 14th season. Now, what did you say? He's got 275 wins. Yep. Looks like it's going to be 276 if this continues tonight. Driving baseline, swarmed. You got a foul and body, yeah, body and labor down there. They've been double team, and we talked about that double team has been effective because they haven't given anything up out of it. Lopes have been not able to find the open man out of the double team, and if they do find it. This Panthers team, well, they're cat quick. They get in rotation and don't give up any outside looks or even drives to the bucket. All the time in the world for Lorenzo Jenkins hits the three. Well, you know, if one guy was going to find the range from the outside, we figured it'd be Low Jenkins. And this kid has came to play tonight. 15 points. Had a nice game on Sunday with 13 points, and now he's got 15 here. Keep feeding Doobie. Brain drives. A little awkward. Plus well, the ball. Yeah, a lot of contact. I, 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 you know me. I love when they let the, the officials let them play with a little physicality and you know he's banging bodies here. And I don't know if he trips on his his own foot or if he if he bumps into Brown's foot. But he went down like a sack of potatoes, and the referee just looked at him, <laughs> just pointing the other way, like, okay, TCU ball. I like that. As long as they're consistent, coaches won't get upset about that at all. Carlos trying to take it. Oh, it doesn't go. He just needs a break. Loose ball, Panthers. Quickly. Got to get back. Isaiah Brown brings it up. For you and I. Poor Carlos Johnson. I mean, he's working hard on defense. He just can't get anything positive to happen down there around that basket. Green in the corner. Burhau. Oh, look at that speed. Wow, he took that some 22, about eh, 20 feet away from the basket and just got all the way to the bucket. You're right about the speed on this team. It's a 20-point game, and, and they're just, just attacking the basket. They had that one little outside shot to beat the shot clock. But for the most part, for about the last six, eight minutes, they have gone to the bucket. Jenkins leads for Brown. Labor comes near side. Look for Carlos. Even the little dribble handoffs that are so effective normally aren't going. Oh, three on the shot clock, and he hits the three. Yeah, I mean, Panthers will live with that. They, they don't want any buckets inside. They're doing a good job, to, you know, not giving up anything on those dribble exchanges and forcing the lobes to continue to bang away from the perimeter. Dahl. Look for A.J. Green, finds him. Eight on the shot clock. Look out, he can shoot from there. Green, here he goes for three. Oh, oh good, good D, good better. Good. Oh, Lutz kid is amazing the way he can shoot that ball. I see why this young fellow's on the Lou Henson watch list. 
Hey, it doesn't matter. Hand in his face. 26 feet he knocked it down. Oh, Look at Brown going inside. Green shut down that baseline. He cut back out and off balance off of the glass. Green, look at this. The motor never stops. Foul on Isaiah Brown. A.J. Green had his Wheaties. Yeah, there you see him. The former low, Jared Martin. We'll chat with Kate Longworth when we come back. Brittany, and this is Ask GCU. Hi, I'm Brittany Holwin, and you should watch Ask GCU. Where we answer your questions every week. And the points don't matter. Wait, what? Tune in every week for answers to be questioned. Where we answer your questions in a common, prof in a, all right. I'm a professional answer. <laughs> Tweet hashtag Ask GCU to get your question featured. There's an exciting destination for food, fun, and golf in the heart of Phoenix. Come to the GCU Hotel and Canyon 49 Grill, where our hospitality management students gain real-world experience and deliver unmatched service. Enjoy beautiful amenities like a resort-style pool, full-service fitness center, championship golf course, and coffee shop GCBC. Canyon 49 Grill serves American fare all day and happy hour with a great vibe and Lopes pride. Room rates start at $89 per night. Visit gcuhotel.com today. Welcome back right now. Panthers with the lead over GCU 64 46. Kate Longworth coming at you courtside with a familiar face. Former GCU star Jared Martin joining me right now. And I know, first of all, Scott Williams is happy to have you back in the house. Uh, fake 42. Oh, yeah, he's, he's already talking about his favorite uh, Martin. He's probably what? talking about when I hit him, and he's talking about it from two years ago. He's probably still complaining. He, he never can let it go. But for you, what is it like to be back at GC Arena? Uh, I mean, it's, it means a lot. It's awesome. This is where I spent five years of my life. Uh, a lot of memories. Uh, visiting my girlfriend, so obviously she's a real uh, special part of my life. So, But no, the basketball, it's, big, it's good to be back, seeing all the familiar faces, things like that. What have you been up to since graduation? A uh, bit of coaching, high school, and then trying to rehab at the moment. But rehab's gone pretty, pretty rough, to be honest. But... Uh, just taking one day at a time, can't look too far ahead, and then um, just coaching to make some money. So it's been it's been it's been a different experience not playing on the on the court right now. And I know they wish you were back out on the court right now. You were one of the leaders here in a GCU uniform. What memories do you take from your time here as a local? Uh, too many, too many. Just highs and lows, and so many good things about, uh, like from wins that you have, and then just the experiences. Uh, Every day at training, everyone talks about the games, but there's so many things that go on at training that you're, you're going to remember for the rest of your life. So that's definitely just the day-to-day -day things. So you, you, you can't forget those things. All right. Well, we can't forget you and your time here. And, of course, a shout-out to your mom. Absolutely. Who's hopefully truly damn for the land down under. Guys, we send it back upstairs. Oh, yeah. Definitely got to get a shout-out to... This is Martin. Oh, yeah, my favorite Martin. I yeah. love Jared Martin. I mean, the hustle, the passion which yeah, that kid right? played for, the leadership that which he showed, it broke my heart. Oh, when he great. went down his senior year, yeah. uh, I wanted him to go out with a bang, and unfortunately, he, he wasn't able to contribute on the floor. But one thing I was so impressed with this young man was that he was still part of the team and still a leader, even though he wasn't able to suit up. And that was very impressive that he just didn't say, oh, well, you know what, I'll just go over here and, and sulk about not being able to play. I mean, he was up and into it. Sometime the first guy off the fence to greet the guys when they came off the floor. What a fun guy to have in your program. Coach Marley misses him, I know that. Yeah, a lot of those followers miss Jared Martin and that energy that he exhibited not only on the court but off of it. And to be honest, you, you kind of wish somebody would have that same spark on this current roster. But they got to find somebody yeah. that has that. You know, Somebody's a lot of new faces. They lost ignited. seven. Not only Jared Martin, who was fantastic, they lost seven guys off that team from a year ago. It's kind of hard to find somebody that's maybe not got that same sort of personality to develop that. It takes time. And I think you're starting to see it with the young kid, Blackshear, mm -hmm. getting some big contributions from the guy, uh, Oppo. Lorenzo Jenkins starting to come into his own. So it's developing. It's just taking a lot longer than we're used to. Okay, you have more on that? 
Well, yeah, you know, I was talking just about that with Jared, too, before our interview on camera, and he was saying, you know, his group, they really went through that transition period to the Division One play. They were here together for a long time. He said some of the guys here just don't have that longevity and the personality, but he hopes that'll kind of turn around when they get some reinforcements back for WAC play. He was giving me some positivity, guys, and if Jared Martin says this is going to turn around, I'm going to trust that. But he also said... It's hard for a young guy to come out here and lead, but it's impressive when you see. And he hasn't missed a game, guys. He's been logging on to watch these. That's awesome. Hey, maybe he's got no eligibility left, but how yeah. about we bring him back as a coach, like a grad assistant or something? I'm <laughs> glad you said coach. I don't want him to take one of our jobs, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Green looking to drive on Oak Pole. Foul committed by Bryce. Yeah, he'd be good with the headset, too. I mean, smart player, understands the game, well-spoken. So, oh, that, is that his girlfriend there? Yes. That's him and his girl there checking out the action. I think he's explaining when he hit you in the head and knocked your headset off and how bitter you remain. You see that scar on his forehead? How do you think he got that scar on his forehead? I saw, him coming. I saw him coming one day. I'm probably good. I just need to get along. <laughs> one of my favorite guys. You know, I didn't know much about the college gay when I started coming over here working with you, but the energy and the passion, uh, of this low basketball team. I mean, it's all summed up in that kid right there. Number 42. I, of course, I wore number 42. That's mm -hmm. why I call him the fake 42. Oh, but fake the passion 42. in which he played the game was something that I fell in love with doing these college basketball games. I think any fan, right, of any any sport and comes out to watch a team play, they, you know, you know that your team's not going to go a perfect, uh, you know, Miami Dolphins uh, and go unbeaten in the season. But if you if you give 100% effort, and you show some fight and some a will to fight and a will to win. Um, I think people are going to leave, you know, the arena and the the, uh, the stadiums and feel like, okay, at least they, they gave it all they, that they had. Yeah, that's why the Havocs love this GCU team. It's because of Dan Marley. And it all starts, I think, with the Coach Marley putting his imprint on this team. I mean, normally his teams play the way he played. It, it's about as hard as they can to in the last breath, but they leave it all on the floor. We haven't seen that all the time out of these low scenes. I think they're developing that mentality. We saw Blackshear there step up and hit the bucket. We've seen really just uh, some glimpses from the freshman of what is going to be developing during his tenure here with the Lopes. Lead is 20 for the Panthers here. They come in. Nine and one on the season with 722 to go in this second half. And it really has been uh, Northern Iowa from from the get go. But some glimpses here to build on. Certainly in that opening half was Lorenzo Jenkins. We've seen glimpses from Javon Blackster, which we've seen pretty much all season. Yeah, Blackster's got to go in here a little bit in the second half. We're seeing some, some life for Alessandro Laver. Um, there's there's going to be good moments for this team. Like you say, we're getting some reinforcements back. It's growing pains. Yep. And they're learning to play together. And right now, that's just taking a little bit longer than what we're expecting. You know, we're, you're used to expecting. Sometimes you got to tip your cap, too, to a, to a Northern Iowa team that's coming in 9-1. and one. They just knocked off the 24th-ranked team. They beat South Carolina, what, 78-72. to 72. Right. I mean, this team is uh, is going to be a team to watch here this season, and Coach Jacobson has them on top. It, it, it's, they're very impressive the, which, the way that they play the game. I mean, they really play as a unit, play together. Um, I'm, I'm so impressed because you talk about how well they're doing and the big names that they've knocked off, but they haven't had, like, a... A trap game. You would think, you know, GCU struggling, not having a winning record. They might come in here and, and try to take the night off, but he is not letting his guys do that. That's a sign of a team that's got goals and places that they want to get to, and they realize that they can't take a night off. But this is go back to, you know, Alessandro Labor, who is here is playing a lot better in the second half, being more aggressive offensively, He's knocked down the outside shot, not waiting for the double team to arrive and taking it to the basket, then Blackshear. He's doing a good job feeding the post and then getting into the point painted area. I love this one right here. Just tricks the defender, gets all the way to the basket. One more by Blackshear here. That, that area at the corner of the key to about three feet out on an angle. He's getting. For 
every three-point shot that GCU makes, Canyon State Credit Union will make a donation to the Students Inspiring Student Scholarship. For more information, go to giving.gcu.edu. Blackshear with six points, seven rebounds in 26 minutes of play. Also has three steals. He always gets his hands on the ball, gets a steal or two a night. Play with a young fella. My career, Allen Iverson. He, he, yeah, he's in the Hall of Fame. He, he, he was really good at getting steals. Problem was, he'd give up three or four easy baskets trying to get a steal. Uh, Blackshear will play solid defense, but still give you a couple steals. I'm not real high on Allen Iverson. I don't know if I've ever mentioned that on air. I think you have. Was he mean to you? Wrong answer. No, I mean his day, his nickname was the answer. I used to say it was wrong, <laughs> wrong answer because he got to the Hall of Fame, but the team never did a darn thing. And that's what they, that made me so upset because I went from such a team-oriented system with the Chicago Bulls, where even though we had a star player like Michael Jordan. Everybody got to be involved because of the way the system ran, the triangle offense and the dedication to defense, team defense. When I got to oh, did you do Philadelphia, that was, that was Iver, Iver, uh, Iverson-esque right there. But when I got to Philly, it was just a one-man show. It's like, I'm out to get my own. I, I don't care, if, as long as I get my 30, I don't care if we win or lose by 25 or 30. And that was just, that pained my heart because I love team basketball. Javon Blackshear has put up a couple of highlights there in the last couple of getting that ball back. Zero points in the first half, eight points here in the second for Javon Blackshear Jr. Go back to this one more time. I was flapping my gums when Blackshear Jr. just went quickity quick to the basket right there. I love that because he acted like he was going to come off the screen. And once the defender looked at, to try to size up where the screen was coming from, he, he just darted to the hole. He's working. Lorenzo Jenkins. You gotta love those guys that don't play the score. You know, <laughs> down by 21, still in attack mode. Carlos. Turn around off the glass, somehow doesn't drop. Loose ball picked up by the Panthers. Haldeman. Carlos Johnson hurt his hand on that one. He's shaking out his right hand. I hope it didn't pop a knuckle or a pop a fender there. Green open look for three off of the rim. Brown. I know he's not having a good night tonight, but you can ill afford for no. him to get hurt. No. Nothing that was with whack play up, up and coming. Blackshear stepping it up here in the second half. Yeah, he, he got stuck on that launch pad for a long time and picking it up now. Burhau, bounce pass, Fife, lost it, gets to Blackshear. Athletic hands, another deflection, get another steal. And around to Jenkins from Blackshear. Brown's got his hand up in the air in the corner. Jenkins looking to make a shot. That was flat. Yeah, he got, a little, he got pushed uh, down with the body by the defender. Had to fade a little further than he's normally used to. He's put some of those in, but that time he really got moved off the spot. Green, fight, move it on Labor. Squeezing, Brown got a hand on it. Labor up to Blackshear. I think these officials are just putting their whistles in their pockets. They're like, we're just gonna let these guys play. <laughs> then, they, then they come down the other end and get Blackshear dancing to the basket and he gets called. He gets a beneficial uh, beneficiary of the whistle there. But for the most part, I mean, that's, okay, the Lopes are in the one and one right now, but Oh, excuse me, no, they're, they're not. They sets the sixth, a little fast over here with the score. But the next time, it, both teams will be shooting free throws, but for the most part, the officials been letting them play. That sure is foul. Fife. Check that, hold them. You know, last time the Lopes came out and didn't perform the way they wanted to, we were were wondering what the makeup of this team would be. They had a couple days off before their next game, and 
I was saying that I would be looking for, I want to get to practice the next day, because I wanted to see who was going to show up for practice the next day and put in the work. And to a man, I went to one of the most physical defensive practices I'd ever seen, about three on three and four on four work. Well, that's going to have to be the case here again. They're coming off of two tough losses. They're going to have to get inside that lab and that practice facility and really figure out what they want to do come starting whack play. Man, the Panthers move the ball around. They really do. Uh, it, it, I just don't think the Lopes were ready for that kind of heat that they, are, that they felt tonight. I mean, both offensively and defensively, they're showing why they're a top team to deal with. Not sure. That's a foul. See, green falls on top of them. And they average they, their opponents average about 61 points a game. <laughs> the way this one's going, the Lopes aren't going to get much more than that. And they and they and they score around 76. So they're they're having their normal game. And this is team against teams like Colorado and South Carolina against some really good teams. So I, mean, I think they beat their opponents by a plus 16 a game. The Lopes are finding out what that they need to do now to take their game to another level playing against this good competition. That's going to serve them well in the whack. Right now it kind of stinks for the record. Yeah, but I think it's good. Here in non -conference yeah, play. But I think once conference play comes around, we'll be quite facing quite the quality of opponents that they're facing here in, in the preseason. Uh, oh, Blackshear. Oh, they got him from reaching in there. Obviously trying to create something. Still playing at 100%. All right, Pedals to the floor. Yeah, with Coach Marley demands to that, go. He, especially out of a freshman. You're going to demand that he go out there and play to that final whistle. Well, I can't see the free throw numbers for you and I over there on that, uh, that scoreboard across the way, but doesn't it seem like every time they go to the line, they make one. They're 16 to 7. That's good, right? Statisticians right on top of it. They're making out 17 of 18 from the free throw line. It, these kids are, a, a, you know, a disciplined group, and they obviously get to the free throw line and uh, on their off days and practice their stroke from the line. Everybody makes it. Brown, near side, cuts into the paint. Dishes out, labor in the corner, looking for three. Off the front of the rim. Burhau with a rebound. I'll take a look at this tape, and you'll use it as a learning experience. Not from so much about what they did, and certainly they could have done some things better tonight. But they're also going to watch the way you and I play offensively and how they, like you said, really move that ball around with precision. Just stay with it. Lost it a bit, just stayed with it. Green puts it in. Got a hand in there, stopping Blackshear. Brown, it's a swarm to the ball. Kicked out, Blackshear. Double team into Oak Pole. Lost it. And a foul committed. 3.03 to go. 75 to 54. We'll be back with some uh, trick shots. Just a moment. Hi guys, what's up? Have you guys ever heard of Ask GCU? I have. I have heard of it. I have before, yeah. What is your favorite Ask GCU episode? Why well, I should go to GCU. Probably the best food place. You know, we all love food. Yeah, we So do. probably that episode. <laughs> what's the best way to drink a champagne? Go-karts. What is your favorite Ask GCU episode? All of them. Yeah. Thank you. My favorite episode is probably where they asked about the Chick-fil-A line. The breakfast one's pretty good. The one where you guys talk about the best places to have breakfast on campus and everyone said Chick-fil-A. That's the best breakfast I ever had. The Welcome Week episode. <laughs> the Welcome Week one. That one's really clutch. The Welcome Week where Brittany jumps around into people's cars and asks them questions. Remember, kids, don't get into people's vehicles. I just really like you guys. I just like it when you're in it. You too. <laughs> Tweet hashtag AskGCU to get your question featured. We're watching the Panthers and Lopes players in action, but check out the managers. Northern Iowa managers tweeted out this. They said, hey, when coach asks you to shoot shots, 
from your game spots. This is what you do. And of course, managers sit behind the team, up in the stands charting things. And then, well, GCU managers in on the action as well with some trick shots of their own over the shoulder. And it is in from half court, one oh, handed. Oh, that's my and shot. And that just, I was just going to say, Scott, I haven't seen uh, your tweet going <laughs> viral yet with uh, your trick shot, right? I haven't even made one yet this year. I'm in a slump. Yeah. So you're the reason why. They need, you got to start this. It starts with everyone, Scott. You come out and make that halftime shot, and I think we're going to see the play on the court change, too. You had to get back in the lab. Jared Martin, Jared Martin in came here. up here Jared to see me. I love it. Oh, my night just got much better. <laughs> What's up, bud? He's here to just pummel Scott. Let's let's get, can we get him on the headset? Sure, we got a spare headset right there. Jared Martin, everybody. Are we in? Yeah, we're on the air. Hell yeah. yeah. There we go. Oh, here. No, no, I'm good, I'm good, good, I'm good, you, I'm good. You yeah. kneel down, kneel down, down here. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, we don't want to put too much <laughs> nah, pressure right. on that it's, knee. It's been through too much already, already, so it's all good. How's the jumper? More importantly, uh, can, can, can we get you back on the floor no, and shoot the three? No, I, nah, I, mean, I, had, I was here for way too long. I was here for about <laughs> eight years, right? <laughs> it felt that way. Every time you come behind the scores table, you'd knock exactly, into the bump exactly. right exactly. into You were just hoping for me to get out of here. They had to move us up here because of all the <laughs> physicality and abuse you delivered. Absolutely. Down on the court. I, I was, I was uh, sitting there. Uh, we were doing the game, and they showed a picture of you sitting in the stands next to a, a, a pretty young lady yeah, over yeah, there. That's, is that's, she doing some charity work? That's much better half. That's yeah, way hub. better. Well, that's well, much better half. Like yeah, better, yeah. better two-thirds, I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, you know. You that's what happens well. when you come over to the States. Hey, hey, you get uh, a very, very nice looking American girl who think you're What's much her name? better than who you are. Ashlyn Hastings. So, uh, yeah, you guys got a picture yeah, we, of her we right got, now. We, get, we just put her yeah, on she's there. She's going to be mad at me. She's going to go on the camera right yeah, now. She'll love that. So you're spending the holidays here then? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. So to the 26th. So spending Christmas here, which will be really, really nice. Uh, Mum's pretty upset at me for not being there for a... Uh, a special Christmas oh. lunch. But the way she well, she's cooks? supposed to be here, right? Uh, exactly, she exactly. Be I know, I know. Snacks? She's probably watching right now. She, she's so hungry. She'll, uh, she was saying, I actually forgot I had Tim Tams for you guys. I forgot to bring them. I, we, oh, really? we had to get out oh, of the house. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll somehow get them back to you next time. Brutal. Yeah, so, so brutal. Talk about this Lopes team a little bit more than you did earlier. What, what are you seeing on the floor that's different from what you guys had during your five years? Here. I'm not sure like there's I tell you what I was saying this to Kay before it's definitely hard when you've only got two guys right now that played on the team last year one's Carlos who started uh, sort of rounded out into shape at the end of the year mm -hmm. kind of had an up and down season so it wasn't too like crash hot uh, last year and then you got Alessandro who his personality isn't really to take over the team. He, he, he's obviously a really great scorer, and, but uh, in terms of being a voice and sort of that guy who's going to really take the, take the team, that's really not his personality, which is totally fine. So you're relying on a guy like Isaiah and then Javon, guys, younger guy, guys who really haven't been in the program uh, to sort of take that lead. And I was lucky enough when I first got here, we had a lot of seniors. And then my second year, Dwayne really took, it, mm. took over and we had yeah. Josh. Just guys who've been around, so it's definitely a learning curve for the guys. But uh, this experience right now is it's gonna it's gonna be better for them. Uh, they're gonna obviously learn from these losses, and once they get Oscar and Mikey back, that's definitely gonna help. But they can't rely on those two guys, that's for sure. So what about what about Blackshear? You mentioned him him briefly. What do you see out of his game that you like? Oh, he's awesome. He's good, really steady. It's just it's tough for him because you've only got seven guys to rotate. So. For, to really coach him and stuff, it's hard because you can't take him out of games very often because you ha you don't have the the horses. So, um, but this is going to be great for him. He, he's getting a lot of minutes. He's learning, um, but great leader. He'll he'll be a great player for us for the next four years. That's for sure. And uh, he's just got to keep continuing to improve. We can't have him thinking this is this is his year. And he, this is going to be him every year. No, he needs to take it a, a next step every single year there. I, 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 I agree, I, and I see them. I see them like wise beyond just being you know ten games into his freshman year. And I think all that experience at the high school level, playing you know in the championships games, playing with that type of pressure, doesn't seem to me like moments are too 
too big for him out here on the floor. Yeah, not at all. So, and, and the kid, Bryce Opo as well, oh, another like freshman him. that has showed. Yeah, yes. I like him. Go ahead, talk about him He's, a little bit. He, he just plays, plays hard, does, doesn't need the ball to really make an impact on the game, and that's someone that I, I, I sort of tend myself, I uh, tend to relate myself to because I didn't try to score a ton of points so he's just doing his job he's rebounding he's trying to make an impact on the defensive end and he's younger I got to redshirt my fresh uh, my first year so my freshman year I was 19 20 put on 10 15 pounds which they were hoping to do mm -hmm. so next year he really needs to take that upon himself over the summer and right. uh, take that next step but he, he's going to be good I like him a lot um, he just needs to work on his shot and uh, the sky's the limit for him I'll tell you what, we got to get that headset off of him, uh, Barry, because he's Might really good, jobs, he's really good as an analyst. Yeah, I'm getting worried. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want me to? I'll do play-by-play. Play. I'll, 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 I'll get Barry out of here. Uh -oh. Oh, 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 boy. Good thing this game's oh. almost over. You, you, you know this business really well uh, already. I'm trying to. And A.J. Green, man, he gave us the business oh, last year. 27 well. points. Yeah, he gave us the business last year yeah. at Northern Iowa. So coming into the game I kind of knew he was going to get hot but he hit his first three threes and I knew it was going to be a long night. This yeah. team's going to be uh, fun at least for Panthers fans to follow. Absolutely there. after that Colorado win a couple of nights ago at, at Colorado. Hey yes, 25 Jared, tonight. Yeah. Jared I know they don't want you to take their job but after this game I'll let you interview Marley tonight if you want oh, to. No, 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 <laughs> yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah, do that Gabe. Yeah, get him out of here. He doesn't want to see my face. I bring up bad memories for him. Well it was fantastic to see you. Yeah good to see you guys. Thanks for coming up. No worries. No worries. All Happy the best. Holidays. Merry guys. Christmas. You Have a good one. Merry Christmas. Yeah kiss your mom for me too. <laughs> Tell her to hook something up for us. We missed those. Thoughts of her home cooking. Yeah, she, she's wonderful. I just love when she'd come right. into town. And yeah. It's all about relationships, always right? Some snacks for us, absolutely. You know, we, you we find somebody from halfway around the world like that, and you have an opportunity to meet with them and their family. I mean, this is what the co college experience is all about, right? We Obviously, this game has not gone the, the Lopes way, but it's about the people. It's it's about the school. It's You know what I mean? That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's a, that was a good get in a, in a tough situation I to have. One of my favorite all-time college basketball players up here at Spencer Mamas with us is fantastic. Love's got to get back into the lab, put their hard hats and lunch bell on, study that playbook, come back out with a better effort next time out. 82-58 is the final score as the uh, Panthers improve to 10 and 1 on the season, and they are red hot. Lopes will regroup, travel to Mexico. We know definitively that Michael Dixon will be back for the Lopes, and we hope Oscar Freyer is as well. So Lopes need reinforcements. We'll be back to wrap things up here from GCO Arena in Phoenix. Again, 82-58, the final score. I'm Jeff. I'm earning my Bachelor of Arts in Christian Studies online from GCU. My biggest challenge coming back into school after taking a 15 year break was insecurity. Insecurity that I didn't know how to write a paper, I didn't know how to study anymore. The way that the program is structured, I can kind of grow into the classes and that really gave me the confidence to be successful. I'm a working professional. I've got a job that demands 40 to 60 hours a week from me. Because of the online structure, I can still get things done. I can still have a life. It allows me to knock out courses when I can. I think my time at GCU is going to help me be a better father, be a better person, be a better disciple. I spent years thinking that I could never do this. So now, the fact that I'm about to graduate, I feel like I achieved something that I never thought I was going to be able to. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. The University of Northern Iowa 82, the GCU Lopes 58, as the uh, Panthers improved to 10 and 1 on the season. Gary Butel, Scott Williams back with you here at GCU Arena as uh, wow, the Panthers came out flying. They went on a number of, uh, of runs, 11 7 7 runs. They, they certainly were lethal from beyond the arc for GCU as they need to get back into the lab, hopefully get some reinforcements back, and Mikey Dixon and hopefully Oscar Freire. Yeah, I mean, there was some bright spots. It wasn't all bad. I mean, they were outclassed tonight, outgunned. There's no doubt about it. That uh, UNI team really can move that basketball with some precision offensively. 
and they did turn it over. It was very few and far between. They were executing offensively, lit up that scoreboard, knocked down a couple long shots and really got the lopes off balance. And then they started attacking side. Definitely moved the ball around really well. They're very disciplined as well. It's time now for our Canyon State Credit Union player of the game, Canyon State Credit Union committed to you. And for GCU, it is Lorenzo Jenkins. One of those good moments I was talking about was Lowe Jenkins, the way he came off the bench with so much energy, came out and knocked down three of his first four shots uh, in the basketball game, gave the Lopes a nice uh, bump. They had seven of the first 14 points early on, and he just stayed aggressive throughout, whether it was doing on defense today, but mostly it was a the offensive firepower, which he displayed tonight, back-to-back -to -back times, he's been double-figure scoring. Uh, and that's what you need. You need somebody to come off the, the bench and give you a lift when the starters aren't going. Well, Lowe Jenkins did that tonight. Definitely earned player of the game on it. So Lorenzo Jenkins is the uh, player of the game, and we revisit our Sanderson Ford keys to the game. Yeah, you know, I think they did a pretty good job getting back uh, defensively. They didn't have that many fast break points, but what they did do is they, lo they lost some guys in transition along that arc, gave up some outside shots on that, on that arc that were, were pivotal uh, in really expanding that lead. Uh, the turnovers, I thought they took care of the basketball tonight. Just five turnovers. They had oh. under double digits on Sunday night, so they didn't turn the ball over that much, just couldn't make any shots. And I didn't know if they did enough to really get this crowd into it. You know, it took them 11-0 you know, to start the game. They had some mini spurts, but never really got the Havocs in it to play that much of a factor on rattling the Panthers tonight. Javon Blackshear, 30 minutes on the court, 12 points, 7 rebounds. The freshman showing some skills here tonight. Yeah, he went down a couple times along that baseline when the big was getting posted up and dug it out. I love that one there, that little hesitation and fearless to the bucket. And then just a quick little bounce pass when he knew his big guy was starting to get a little rhythm to his game. Gave the ball a couple times down there on that block and out on the perimeter. But he did a nice job not watching the scoreboard, but really playing hard throughout all of the game. And remember, he was on the floor. Jared Martin nailed it. This kid's got real good potential, and I think once the Lopes start to come together, they're really going to find that he's got a, a good, going to be a good leader for this team. Take a look at the upcoming schedule for GCU. Travel to the pit and the Lobos at New Mexico, December 17th. Mikey Dixon returns, and we hope Oscar Freyer as well. Back here against Eastern Illinois, and then it's conference play at Bakersfield, then back here, Milan Aqua and Cal Baptist on January 11th before traveling to Chicago to take on Chicago State January 16th. That'll do it from here at GCU Arena, where tonight the Lopes lost to Northern Iowa 82-58. to Please join Michael Potter and Paul Coro on Tuesday when GCU travels to New Mexico to face the Lobos. They can be heard on 1580 AM or 99.3 FM, 95.9 FM. We'll be back here Saturday, December 21st. The Lopes taking on Eastern Illinois. But until then, for Kate Longworth, Scott Williams, night, and our everybody. entire crew, I'm Barry Butel, wishing you a wonderful evening.